Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Pokemon Let's Go Tournament 2023 for the last race of the final round here. Uh, I'm Trevaria. I'm going to be on commentary for this race, and I'm not alone. I am joined by none other than Gavin NBD. Gavin, how are you doing? Hey Good. Excited for the race today, and uh, yeah, excited to see how everything pans out, and uh, it's a great way to end round one. It definitely is. We're going to have a very exciting race here today, I think, with some very interesting implication uh, implications when it comes to the standings. Uh, we have three great runners here today, uh, starting off with Dynam, our pot one runner, who rose through the ranks very quickly, uh, coming in here now with a 20222 PB. Very, very impressive. Yeah, he's only been doing this for about a month, correct? And has already put up a time this good. So, um, yeah, very impressive to see him uh, rise so quickly. And uh, I know he's going to be pushing for uh, one of the top times to secure his, uh, you know, as high a seat as possible. Yeah, I'm very interested to see uh, what that's going to look like. Oh, all right. We're already ready. <laughs> Let's just very quickly talk about the other two runners here before uh, the run itself starts. We also have Crisis, who is a uh, very skilled Scarlet and Violet speedrunner, uh, also only recently gotten to Let's Go and already has a sub 310 PB. Yeah, I saw that uh, near the beginning of this tournament, he was uh, still doing some Scarlet and Violet runs uh, <laughs> in his free time, but. I think over the past few weeks, he's been uh, dedicating himself to uh, preparing for the tournament. And uh, it's, you know, definitely evident with that new PB he posted that uh, he's going to be uh, tough to beat today. Yeah, and uh, the third runner we have is the Million Runs, and I think you can tell me a little bit more about them. Yeah, I actually had the pleasure of uh, meeting Vermillion at uh, SGDQ. and. Uh, we were doing a little bit of uh, prepping him for his first run. I, I think he learned about the tournament uh, after um, hearing it promoted during Etiquette's run. And uh, fortunate, one of the competitors and I were kind of coaching him through a little bit of the early game. Um, and he did his first run at SGDQ um, in the practice room and um, seemed really psyched to be a part of this tournament. Um, I know he has a background in doing games like Final Fantasy and um, Fire Emblem, and uh, so this is kind of his first foray, I believe, into Pokemon um, speedrunning. But yeah, I'm confident that his other speedrunning um, accomplishments will help him out in this. And uh, yeah, excited to see how fast he's grown over just a few weeks. Well, this race, I think, is shaping up to be quite interesting. We're already off here. Uh, like I said, we're going to be seeing two runners doing Pikachu version here with Dynam and Crisis. Uh, just Vermillion going for the EV version. Yes, only Vermillion making the correct choice. <laughs> there will be no, there will be no Pika slander while I'm on the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily, you are familiar with both games, so you know, you yes. you know, have the ability to speak to both, whereas I've watched quite a few Pika runs, uh, you know, over the past few years, but uh, only actually done Eevee runs myself. But I'm very happy to cover uh, the Pika side here. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've got, looks like two boy ones and one girl one. Uh, the most important choice in the game to start. Um, <laughs> Of course, does not affect anything, but uh, you know, just always interesting to see what runners' preferences are. Um, and as you look at uh, as the runners get into their first catch, you know, mostly just like a tutorial for how to catch a Pokemon, um, you'll see on the screen that we have a box of a bunch of different Pokemon that are some highlighted and some non highlighted. Uh, these are the trackers that are used to track how many catches uh, each runner has. Um, so you can see it'll cycle through each runner uh, periodically. And the reason we have this is that each runner needs to catch 50 Pokemon. And 
reason for that is that each gym has a gym as a requirement to get into the gym. Koga's is the most uh, the strictest requirement, or the one that has the most effect on the speed run, in that you have to catch 50 Pokemon for your Pokedex, and so a lot of the run uh, over the first uh, two hours will be dedicated to catching all of those Pokemon. Yes, that is a very important part of the speedrun. Now, the first difference already happened. Sadly, I wasn't really able to catch it because uh, the screen is a little pixelated on my end right now. Uh, for Pikachu version specifically, uh, you want to take a look at the CP value while you are trying to catch it. Uh, CP is somewhat of a made up number <laughs> where uh, the game takes the stats and just puts it into a formula that gives the player an overview uh, of the stats that the Pokemon is going to have. And specifically for Pikachu, uh, if it has 27 CP, you know that the Pikachu is going to have a neutral nature. Now, I didn't see what Dynamo Crisis got. Uh, I assume they did, but if they are going to check their nature here right after they receive the Pikachu, then it's probably not going to be neutral because otherwise they will probably just move on. Yes, yeah, so let's take a look to see if they decide to check nature. And no. it looks like neither of them will. Interesting. Uh, so they will both uh, find out uh, on the first, uh, well, second trainer battle uh, after the rival. Uh, let's see, Vermilion. Him at EV. Looked like he was about to. Oh, he is going to. Uh, yeah, it's minus and attack. Take it back up. He had a minus attack EV there, uh, definitely understandable. Uh, since the backup is a very valid option, uh, loses about 40 seconds to loading back into the game, but uh, the runners are allowed to prepare a neutral nature starter uh, right at that position in the lab. Now, the fact that both Dynam and Crisis did not check their natures makes me think that either they, they saw that they had 27 CP and thus knew that the Pikachu is just going to be neutral anyway, or they are very confident that they can also run bad Pikas, like minus attack Pikas. Though I did think that Dynam said before the tournament that he was going to reset minus attack if he if he got that. Uh, yeah, so then it's probably like that Dynam might be running with a neutral Pika. Um, just for some added context, uh, is it... Is minus attack or minus special attack for Pika one more unrunnable than the other? Or how many uh, yeah. people are there? Yeah, um, so the difference, in my opinion, is minus minus attack Pikachu is just going to waste your bunch of time. You're going to lose or you're, you're going to waste some turns because you're not going to get those one shots. But none of those wasted turns are going to happen on important fights. So it's still pretty safe to run minus attack, but it's slow. Minus special attack, on the other hand, doesn't really waste you a lot of time, but it makes the Jesse and James fight in tower a nightmare. So you really want to get high experience to at least get two shots on both Arbok and Weezing, which uh, I did that. I ran a minus special attack uh, Pikachu in my round one race and it worked out fine. But that's also because I got a super sized Radicate on round 10. Uh, it's a help. bit of a gamble, but I personally wouldn't re reset minus special attack over minus attack. Yeah, and then on the EV side, for context, uh, it uh, kind of depends on the phase of the, the game. Uh, over the first half of the part that you'll be using EV, um, minus attack really uh, hurts you because you'll be headbutting a lot of things. Um, and then as you progress later and later into the run, the special attack becomes more of the important quality, uh, a special, especially in things like Rocket Hideout and Pokemon Tower, where you'll be using um, special psychic moves uh, more frequently. And of course, mm. Eevee also has to, uh, has to pay attention to its speed. So minus speed Eevee may be in trouble on things like the boat rival fight, whereas minus speed Pikachu really only has to worry about the goal battle on Archer and Hideout. So you yeah. can usually just roll with minus speed Pikachu's. Yeah, so if you're unfamiliar with uh, this game a little bit, um, 
the both the starters have buffed stats compared to a regular Pikachu and Eevee. Um, so they have. Uh, so speaking of that speed for Pikachu, I believe this Pikachu has a speed stat, a base speed of 120. Uh, so having a minus in that really isn't going to make much of a difference. Um, whereas Eevee stats are, uh, while it's helpful that they're all kind of uh, increased, they're much more well-rounded and so um, nothing is especially high and things like minus speed can hurt you. Um, and it looks like Vermilion getting a trolled a little bit with Growl and <laughs> Paralysis in the rival battle, but uh, eventually makes it through. Okay, let's check the Pika stats here real quick. Uh, okay, that looks like minus attack on Crisis' side, uh, neutral attack for Dynam, so that is pretty rough for Crisis. Yeah, it looked like it might have been minus defense for Dynam. I saw a single digit there at level 5. That is pretty dangerous. It's not minus defense isn't as dangerous for Pika as it is for Eevee because Eevee uh, goes into the Giovanni one fight and hide out by itself and has to take quite a lot of physical hits. Yeah, I know that's running minus defense Eevees frequently. <laughs> that's often the most uh, terrifying fight. And, uh, but overall won't make it too much of a difference outside that fight. Um, and Dynam actually making the first catch of the run uh, on Route 2, uh, opting to catch the bug uh, before entering the forest, even though it's not um, that high of a level, it's a nearly guaranteed catch, so a lot of runners will opt to do that and just get one catch under their belt so that they can uh, two control to catch anything that comes uh, to them in the forest. And to not risk a potential bug breakout, which uh, can happen and be very frustrating. Yeah, the one C breakouts in Forest uh, are really frustrating, especially if the bug that you're trying to catch just ends up running away right after. Who would ever have that happen? I don't know, not me. Uh, <laughs> so Dynam just confirmed in chat that he has a he has a gentle Pikachu with defense characteristic. So let me just double check. That's plus special defense, minus defense. Yes. Into nature. But with the defense characteristic. So uh, usually if you have a non-neutral nature, the stat that uh, is lowered by the nature will not receive any AVs on level up. But uh, since Dynam Pikachu did receive an AV in that stat, we know that he has to have the characteristic benefiting that stat. And just to explain one more time what AVs do, uh, instead of the effort values that are in basically any other mainland Pokemon games uh, these days, Pokemon and Let's Go will just gain a random plus one to one stat on level up. And that's what is called an AV or awakening value. The official name is Go Power, but no one calls it that, at least not in the <laughs> Let's Go community. And it is influenced by both the nature and the characteristics. So uh, since Danim did get that defense characteristic, you'll probably see a couple of AVs go into defense. Which I guess is nice because it neutralizes the minus defense nature a little bit. Yeah, definitely helps balance things out so that you're not facing uh, too much of a deficit as you normally would. Um, and what you'll see all the runners uh, either just doing or about to do is using a lure. Uh, so lures are kind of the opposite of repels. They attract more Pokemon, um, but more importantly, they attract Pokemon that are one higher level than the maximum level you would normally find them uh, in that area. So um, whereas you would normally find uh, uh, Weedles and Caterpies uh, ranging up to level six, here every Weedle and Caterpie that's going to be spawned after the lore is going to be level seven. And as we'll be evolving those Pokemon, uh, having them be as high as level as possible already is definitely a benefit to cut down on level ups. Yes, every level up in this game comes with its own text box that has to be cleared. So you really want to minimize 
the amount of level ups you receive until the Pokemon can evolve. Well, Dynam mm -hmm. does get a Caterpie here, which means he should be done in the forest, and unless he sees a Bulbasaur on the way, way out, which is a very, very rare spawn. He did catch a an Oddish in forest. That's going to be level 8, I think, after this catch. Which makes me think he may catch something on Route 2 to get it to level 9, which makes the Brock fight a little easier uh, for the Oddish. Because that is what Pikachu version uses for that fight. Right, whereas Eevee version will be using Eevee for that fight um, and will be uh, needing to get Eevee to level 10 in order to do that fight. Ooh. And there's Bulbasaur on the screen. Uh, sorry, a Frick on the screen. <laughs> uh, Vermillion catching one uh, and hopefully being able to handle it. It can be a little bit difficult. Um, yeah, there it is. Uh, attacking right when the circle is starting to get small. Um, but... It's very tricky to catch. Yeah. Crisis just got a glowing Oddish on Ratu, which is very nice because uh, a glowing Pokemon give an extra experience modifier or multiplier uh, on top of this Oddish being higher level than if he had caught it in Forest. This is going to give a nice amount of experience. Yeah, 317, that's quite a lot. Gets Pikachu to level 10, which is nice. And let's see what Dynam does outside. Ah! He's going for the glowing Pidgey. Okay, I respect that. I personally prefer the Rattata, but since the Pidgey is glowing, uh, I can definitely understand going for that. Kind of unfortunate that he doesn't hit the circle here. Because uh, that would also give another experience multiplier. Oh, and the Ooh. breakout even! That is really unfortunate. We're going for the excellent this time. Yeah, catching uh, a Pidgey or uh, Rattata here can be uh, a nice little bump, even if you are, you know, high enough level to theoretically take on Brock. And ooh, that was actually Four a super body. size bird. Okay, I take everything back. This is <laughs> <laughs> if he had gotten the catch without the circle, that would have probably been optimal. Uh, yeah, getting that first catch bonus, uh, first ball bonus would have been nice, um, but. Getting that first ball excellent might have leveled up the bugs uh, to maybe you know level eleven or level twelve, which you know is ideally, a little unnecessary. But yeah, I, ideally you do want the bugs to be fully evolved uh, by the yeah. time you get into Mount Moon. So uh, Dynam is in a very nice position for that right now with both of the bugs already at level nine, just one level away from fully evolving. But let's look at the other runners here. Uh, Christ is going for a glowing Pidgey as well. And looks like he has a, gl a glowing Rattata also on the screen. So we'll see if he goes for both. It's the excellent. And Vermillion should also just be down with the forest and enter Route 2. Yeah, it looks like Vermillion Oh, is he going to go yeah, for it? Yeah, perfect. Um, That's a gonna, great song, so near that. Yeah. Um, technically, didn't need the Bellsprout uh, because he has the Bulbasaur, but, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's a common strat on the Eevee version to catch the early Bellsprout um, because you need a grass Pokemon to get in, to Brock's gym and also uh, to evolve it just to have another uh, guaranteed catch. Now, considering that the Bulbasaur just leveled up three times, you could see Vermilion deposit the badge part and just keep the Bulbasaur around. You do need yeah, one but... Grass-type Pokémon to get into Brock's gym. Yeah, but, I think yeah. I would probably opt for that, um, just because Bellsprout is quite a few levels to get to 21, and it learns three or four moves all along the way, which can be time consuming. Um, but yeah, we'll see if you have to just keep it for, you know, race safety. I could definitely understand that. Chris is already getting the Beedrill and Dynam the Butterfree. So everyone is, seems to be on a pretty good, uh, in a pretty, pretty good spot in terms of experience. 
which especially for Crisis is pretty good since, you know, he has minus attack, he really would want to be at a higher level to make up for that. Just swapping Oddish into the lead here. Mm -hmm. And, and also taking the time. Him. Yeah. So I'm oh, not sure about you. Uh, did you. Sometimes I'll opt to keep the Pidgey in the party and evolve it. I don't know if that's a you know commonly used strat, but is that something you would you know you would opt uh, for if it was getting experience, or just you think it's better to just ditch it and um, you know maybe catch a Pidgey out later? Yeah, I, w I I would never opt to evolve route to Pidgey. I think. Uh... You can still get the Pidgeotto on Route 17. That is one level off of evolving into Pidgeot. So, uh, and you could also go for Pidgeot on Route 6 if you needed the experience at that point in time. So I don't really see the value of evolving the Route 2 Pidgey, especially because it would take so many levels to get to that evolution anyway. All right, so Dynam getting ready to face Brock and Vermillion getting into the gym, and Crisis about to make his way into the gym. Yeah, the pets are going, going to look entirely different between versions here. Dynam with his level 11 Oddish is just going to click Absorb twice, and that should be it. Whereas Eevee has to do a little bit of extra work to get through rocks, rock types. Uh, Vermillion is going to actually two control the fight, interesting, with the grass type. Bulbsaur uh, in slot 2. Going for double kick plus Vine Whip, I assume. Deech Seed. Oh. Is that a misclick? I would assume so. Probably meant to do Vine Whip and hopefully we just. You know, that is unfortunate. Get one turn. Dynam's Otter's 12 speed at level 12. That is also very unfortunate. Thank you, Sandy, for pointing that out. So uh, there's going to be two fights in Mount Moon that the Oddish will uh, do by itself. And uh, one of them contains a Sand Shrew with 12 speed. So unless the Oddish levels up one more time, which can still happen, that's going to be a speed tie, which is kind of unfortunate. And that even though the Oddish is very competently leveled. All right, looks yeah. like everyone is about down with Brock. Yep, so as Trip was alluding to, you'll see that Vermillion is still finishing up the Brock fight, getting through some of the text. Um, whereas even though Crisis came in to the gym afterwards, was able to uh, very quickly uh, take care of the Onyx and Geodude and get out of there before Vermillion. Well, now that, now that they are exiting the gym, we're going to see the first shop of the game, the Pewter City shop, uh, where we will see Oranus buying some X items, some great bots to catch uh, a couple of more Pokemon in Mamoon, and then also some status heals. Yes, and all of this item shopping has been routed uh, very carefully to uh, make sure that the bag is... Uh, sorted in the most efficient way possible so that when you're using X items in battle, it's, you know, an easy one input to get to that item. Um, so you'll see as the battles actually take place that uh, everything will be it's optimized to be as quick as possible. And um, the money routing is also uh, pretty tight in the early game to make sure that you're having just enough items to uh, get by. Yes. Uh, Danim did go for the safe stretch shop here, not buying an X defense, instead opting to buy a burn here. They can get burned by Misty Starmie, which if you don't have a burn here, there's no way you can heal that. The next three healers quite a ways away at that point. Uh, the only other option you'd have was to go into the Pokemon Center and take that heal, but that is pretty slow. So many runners opt to buy that extra burn heal and just not go for the X defense. 
The X defense is used way later in the run on the last gym leader. But usually runners will also just do a safety strat for that and skip the X defense entirely. So it just works out pretty well. Um, so we'll see that Dynam kind of breezed through uh, Route 3 while Crisis actually uh, got lucky with a main key and has a Sandshrew on screen. Um, so we'll be during this route, um, there are some bonus catches that things you normally wouldn't uh, come across, but have a small chance of appearing. And on Pika's side, that's uh, Mankey and Sandshrew. And then on the Eevee side, uh, there is just Ekans that uh, you can come across. And there is one other spawn that we could see a Charmander, but that's very rare, and I would not count on seeing one. Uh, but Vermilion does get the Ekans, uh, which is a nice bonus. Definitely nice to see Dylan now in the first fight in uh, in Mamun. Like I said, this is going to be handled by the Oddish, just going for Asset here. Uh, now, since Dynam didn't get any extra catches, yeah, he's going to stay level 12 on that Oddish for the Sanshu, which means we're going to see a speed tie. It's 50-50 whether uh, Oddish will outspeed the Sanshu or the other way around. It's going to be a one-shot either way with Absorb, but I think the Sanshu has Sand Attack, which we really don't want to see. Yeah, and that can be unfortunate on the Eevee side as well. If you don't happen to hit the rain, have you know good enough attack, uh, you can miss the headbutt range, um, especially if you're oh no, oh, the million taking right. the yeah, accidentally jump the ledge. Fine. Which uh, if you do jump that second ledge, uh, there is a bug catcher waiting to fight you. But luckily, it just has one Kakuna, so it's not uh, not too detrimental. Should we should just go down to a headbutt maybe? Oh no, he doesn't know how to yet, because that <laughs> comes later. But nope, apparently tech was enough. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, the game kind of tricks you a bit by showing you that you can jump a ledge to dodge a trainer, and then right afterwards uh, punishes you if you decide to <laughs> jump a ledge to dodge, dodge a trainer. So Dynam get did get both of his uh, bugs evolved in time, so he can now basically clear out the entire party before going down into the basement floors here. Uh, this is not actually the way out of Mount Moon, but we go down there anyway, because there are two very valuable items that we can grab. And also, there's a bunch of Pokemon that we really want to catch, both for catch count and for experience reason. So let's see what Dynam gets here uh, when he first enters the room. Nothing so far. <laughs> Picks up the Moonstone. Okay, just a Geodude. Not what you want to see. Yeah, you can get quite a few spawns down here. Um, and so norm sometimes when you enter the room, you know, instantly six things will appear. Uh, and sometimes the game decides to do it a little more gradually. <laughs> Does get the good Geodude cycle though and hits the excellent. That's what we want to see. Uh, the other two Pokemon that you really want to catch in Mount Moon are Paris and Clefairy. Spe specifically the Clefairy that is very, very good for experience this early in the game. As Crisis is doing, or yes. we'll see if it... this might be an unlord Clefairy. Yes, it is unlord. Yeah. Interesting call to go for that. I don't know if you ran by uh, into it on accident. It's of course good to have better to get it now than to never get it after. But I wonder if the lost experience is worth it. And Dynam, it was a little unclear if he was uh, trying to run into this glowing Zubat or if he was just trying to check for the double moonstone. Um, but regardless, uh, he decided to go for it and not run away and is able to get the first catch. Usually with a great ball, it's uh, pretty likely to get in. Yeah, Dana may have gone for that for experience reasons, since nothing else had spawned uh, and the Zubit was glowing. Just going to leave the chamber now. Uh, apparently, Crisis is already fine on experience. Uh, this Pikachu is already level 15, so that is the uh, EXP requirement that the runners will need to pass in order to enter Misty's gym. 
And if Pikachu has already hit that level, then going for the Unlooked Fairy is totally fine, since you don't actually need the experience. Uh, do we think he's going to go for this Onyx, too? I hope not. Lord Onyx and Mount Moon is a nightmare to catch. But I guess <laughs> we'll see. I guess we'll see. I mean, ah, Dan, I, I'm getting I, a Paris now. Okay. I, I like going for the Moon and Onyx, but... Uh... Maybe in a race setting, I would be a little bit more careful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, where you're not going to be resetting. Then it gets to Paris. Yeah, I think that should fix this experience. Uh, and since Crisis, Crisis's experience is fine, I don't think it's worth it at all to go for the Onyx just for the catch count. It's so annoying to catch. No, it doesn't look like we did, uh, did get the Paris to spawn. Yeah. Ah, oh, unfortunate right. throws right into the attack. Looks like Vermillion did went up the ladder to reset the spawns, uh, hoping to get what he wants. And just to see Dynam's Pikachu's experience here. Okay, yeah, this is yeah. this is perfectly fine. It's gonna hit level 15 probably on Jesse and James, maybe on the Super Nerd fight. So just in time for Misty. It is a little on the low end still, but uh, shouldn't be too bad moving forward. Kras is just doing the central fight now with the Pikachu. Interesting choice. Like I said, usually you do this fight with the Oddish in the lead. Because Pikachu can't reliably deal with the central. It gets poisoned Ooh. by... Oh no. That is so unfortunate. Oddish doesn't have that problem since it's poison type itself. But uh, yeah, that's the other thing that can happen on the central fight if you go into it. With Pikachu or with Eevee on Eevee's side, uh, don't get an, get a one shot there. Yeah, and the poison itself, you know, the damage is not the most detrimental thing. I would argue the status lag is the worst uh, part of it. Is that uh, in this game, whenever you have a status effect or the opponent has a status effect, um, you can be subject to some. Uh, in-game lag where it's processing the animation even though you have the animations off and it can noticeably add a few seconds to any fight or any turn um, so yeah. price is opting to heal that as soon as possible to not affect uh, the next fight yeah definitely the smart choice uh, status that can be like up to three seconds per turn so you really want that status gone. Also, of course, fights that take multiple turns, you'll get that poison tick at the end of every turn, which right. takes up even more time. Then I'm now on the Super Nut fight. Ah, uh, doesn't hit the double kick range. At level 15, that would have been guaranteed. Oof. Crest is getting put to sleep. So many statuses in Mount Moon already. I hate to see it. Meanwhile, Vermilion hitting 15 with a glowing Clefairy, so he is all set for uh, Misty and should be able to hit uh, some of these ranges that are coming up on the subsequent fights a little bit more reliably. Yes, and seems to opt for keeping both the Bulbasaur and the best part around. Which is good for securing a high catch count for sure. Definitely. All right. Dynam in the Jesse and James fight, uh, one of many throughout the run. Um, each time they just have, you know, their signature Pokemon, the Coughing and Ekans, or later the Weezing and Arbok. And uh, it can. How many turns does this typically take for the peak version? It should just take two turns, but uh, yeah, 
because sure. Pikachu is under level. Yeah, because Pikachu is only level 14. The Thunder Shock doesn't do quite enough damage for Odish's Acid to take out take out both of the opponents here. So it's a three turn after all. Also, Pikachu got poisoned. Unfortunate Jane J1 for Dynam here. And Kras is now on the Super Nerd because he has already hit level 15, so that double kick should be guaranteed. Actually, no, it's minus attack, so probably still a range. Don't quite know what the math is there. Even at level 16, that may not be guaranteed. Uh, I imagine Pikachu, it's you know not too scary of a fight, given that uh, on the Eevee side, you can get paralyzed uh, from Thundershock. Um, but uh, Pikachu said you are electric type, so you can't get paralyzed. And um, you can't. Oh, really, God. Dynam uh, is getting the shaft right that. now. <laughs> Two random encounters just leaving, trying to leave him. Well, that is really unfortunate. Don't want to see that. But yeah, the Magnemite can both paralyze and confuse, which is really annoying, especially for Eevee, because Pikachu, like you said, will not get paralyzed. And on Eevee, a lot of times you will risk not buying the, uh, the paralyzed heal in that first shot. So um, you kind of have to just, uh, you know, do your best to get through the rest of Mount Moon while paralyzed. There is a paralyzed heal just outside mm -hmm. of Mount Moon to pick up if you didn't buy one. Uh, so you can heal it right after without going to the center. But it's still very annoying. Speaking of going to the center, all of the runners will enter the Cerulean Center to pick up some special moves for their starters. There's a move tutor right there. Uh, Pikachu's just gonna learn one move here called Zippy Zap. Zippy Zap is a 50 power physical uh, electric type move that always crits and has a priority of plus two, so it even has a higher priority than quick attack. Yeah, and very, very once strong. once Eevee gets there, uh, there'll be a different set of moves. There'll be three moves, uh, one for each of the uh, Kanto or first generation evolutions, and they are pretty broken moves that uh, we'll be using very frequently throughout the run. Uh, fire move, a water move, an electric move, both with added effects of uh, the fire move always burns, the electric move always paralyzes, and the water move uh, acts like uh, a move like Giga Drain or Drain Punch, where it will heal uh, half the damage you dealt. So all have uh, definite, uh, they're very beneficial uh, for Eevee in the subsequent fights. Yes, Eevee gets a lot of use out of those special uh, moves that it gets in the Pokemon centers. Dynam just posted his IV, uh, AV spread in, in chat. And that's a very bulky Pikachu. <laughs> uh, five defense AVs, three special defense AVs, and two special attack AVs. Not what you want to see. This also does mean that the Pikachu has neutral attack. Uh, not a single AV going into that, which is unfortunate. Would probably mean that he can't really go for some of the rangers later in the run but he is now on misty uh going into it with two controllers is this a common strat for pika uh no <laughs> pikachu is full health too i'm not sure Especially because Pikachu has plus special defense nature. Usually, if you're already on somewhat low health, the Starmie can be quite dangerous. Actually, hits the Zupi Zap one shot range here too, so I'm not sure what the decision making process was like there. Maybe want to ask Dynam after the race. Well, at least Oddish will have some battle, get a little XP boost, and maybe evolve a, a little bit faster from participating in the fight. I 
Petsy. Ah, okay. Cross is also going for 2C. Am I just misremembering the Misty fight from Pika? Is this a common... <laughs> is this a common strategy? <laughs> I've only been doing Scala for two weeks now. How can <laughs> I, I have forgotten say, I don't something think you're like rusty. that? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe this is just a race safety thing. Uh, but yeah, I would feel it's pretty confident that either of them could have taken it out um, with one controller, but... Um, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, it is race safety. Just uh, um, if you go for two C, which is a strat that you can do in EV specifically. Uh, but if it's if you're going into this with two controllers, Sarmi is very likely to just go for uh, Swift, which is a spread move. So we'll hit both targets. But unlike Skull, doesn't have a chance of burning anyone. So I can definitely see the use of that 2c strat and why they would go for it it's just i think a little bit slower than going for the 1c ben is now finishing up the bridge travel fight here without any problems didn't get poisoned by the Odish. let's see what and crisis yeah crisis is about to start the same fight And as Dynam uh, moves on uh, to Nugget Bridge, uh, we will see uh, another difference between the Pika and Eevee versions that um, Eevee will be able to use its uh, newly learned moves to uh, comfortably one-shot everything. Uh, whereas Pika, there'll be possibly some moving around, switching party members if they decide to do that through the Sandshrew. Um, a little no, extra see work. Usually Pika can just uh, do everything once here as well. The only somewhat dangerous fight is the Sentry again, but you can just summon the second controller um, and do it with Oddish. Oddish one-shots the Sentry in that fight as well. And then Pika can just spend its own turn healing. And generally, you can just zippy zap everything because that's such a strong move, even the things mm. that aren't weak to electric like this side act. We'll just die to it, even though, yeah, like I said, it's not super effective or anything. Crisis now finishing up the rival fight. Got through that also without getting poisoned. It's always what we want to see. And Vermilion not getting burned by the star moon, which is nice. Then I'm opting to one see the sand shoe get sand attacked. Let's hope it doesn't miss. Okay, hits the second one. That's the danger of doing the one C uh, fight against the sand shoe. Usually you'd just like to see a headbutt flinch there. But then I didn't get it in this instance. Uh, so since you mentioned that Pika will be zippy zapping pretty much everything over the next handful of fights, uh, does I know in the Eevee version the headbutt PP is something you kind of have to keep in mind, uh, keep a watch out for. Does Pika have that same issue with zippy zap, or is yes. it pretty comfortable? Yes, you definitely want to keep track of your zippy zap PP. Uh, specifically, you need at least one zippy zap PP for the Eradicate fight on round nine, uh, and then also you'd like two or three zippy zap pp for the rival fight on the ssn so ideally you want to leave this part of the game with four uh pp still on zippy zap you can go a little bit lower as low as two basically but uh you do need to keep that in mind Looks like Vermillion opted to Sizzly slide the Pidgey. I don't know if he was hoping for uh, that his attack was high enough that he could get that, but uh, was unfortunately punished when he didn't one shot it and get the same attack. So that is that unfortunate. Item. I'm pretty sure that's a pretty high. You have to have pretty high attack to get that guarantee. What level is this uh, EV at even? I can't uh, see it, it just turned 17 after okay. the Oddish, so... Yeah, that uh, probably was not a favorable range. Yeah. Possibly a misclick. Ooh. Ooh, and missed the attack and Pikachu's double team, but 
Uh, luckily, Oof. didn't matter. Good. That would have been so annoying. Send attack, accuracy drop, and the double team. That could have gone on for ages. Luckily, doesn't get punished too bad. And there's the Bulbasaur evolution. Yeah, Dynam just opted to go two headbutts into this coughing since his Pikachu has a uh, neutral attack. The range for Zippy Zap to one shot the coughing is pretty bad. And you can just opt to use headbutt to save the Zippy Zap PP. Doesn't look like he's going for any catches on this route. We'll now just approach the first chain skip of the game where you can just snake through oof that was very close snake <laughs> through these two trainers that look like they are blocking the road but uh, really aren't because of how narrow and short lands of sight in this game can be meanwhile crisis now on the grand fights uh pretty sure the pikachu's higher level if it has hit 18 here you usually have a favorable range for the Zippy Zap one shot on coughing. Let's see what Crassus goes for. It's hard to read for me what the level actually is, but I think it was 18, so. I believe so. No, it goes for the headbutt, okay. Right, because minus attack. I keep forgetting. Yeah, yeah but he does get the flinch, which is nice. Yeah, that is the the good thing about going headbutt turn one. There, the coughing does have a move that can poison you as well, so you can get poisoned up to three times on like a bridge alone in Pika version. Uh, <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> is that uh, possibly from experience? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, uh, you can get poisoned by Ravid's Oddish, by that Sandshrew, and by the coughing at the end. So getting the headbutt flinch there is really nice to see. And all of the three runners will go and turn Bill back into a human here. Ideally not ditch him before moving on. Then I'm just finished with that. Yeah, ditching him is a different run and maybe a different tournament down the road. <laughs> yeah, Dynam's just gonna take the long walk down to Vermilion City. See, meanwhile, Crisis finishing up the last trainer battle before Bill. And Vermilion looks like on the last trainer before the rocket grunt. In EV version, you do always want to go for Bouncy Bubble on the Pokemon that are weak to water, since that will result in a one shot and also heal the EV. Pika doesn't have that luxury. Pika doesn't have a move that heals itself. So if you are on low health on Nugget Bridge in Pika version, you usually have to go for that 2C strat against the Sentru, the strat that I mentioned where Pika just uses its turn to potion. But Eevee can just use Bouncy Bubble and heal, which is very convenient. Yes, very nice to save a potential menu of having to go in and use potion. Um... Let's see, so uh, what's Dynam going to be? Dynam's going to be approaching Route 6 uh, after going through the underground. What kind of things is he going to be looking for? Well, Route 6 is very important for Pika, mainly because of one Pokemon, and that is Growlithe. Growlithe is going to be the next partner Pokemon that Pika uses. Pika, the Pika run in general uses a lot of, of partner Pokemon that are used by the second controller and sometimes even just as on its own, like with the Oddish earlier. And the Growlithe is going to be, or is supposed to be, the partner Pokemon for three fights here in, in the mid-game. Ooh, Vermillion going for Noxkip, Noxkip. <laughs> Uh Very risky strat. 
interesting to see him pull it off. Uh, yeah, so the Growlithe is very important to catch because uh, you need that extra Pokemon to defeat the rival fight, for instance, on SSN uh, reliably. You can also get very lucky and get an Abra, but that does need to evolve before you hit that uh, rival fight. So uh, if you catch it last, you're not re really going to be able to use it since it's not going to evolve. The other benefit of the Growlithe is that you can just ride it later. Uh, Arcanine is a very fast ride Pokemon, so you get to increase your movement speed, which we love to see. This isn't the last chance to get Growlithe, but it's, de it's definitely the best uh, spot to get it in. So let's see what Danim gets on Route 6. Nothing so far. Just gonna go and grab the rare candy up in that corner. And... Hey, two Pidgeotos. <laughs> Jigglypuff. Going. Pidgey. Yeah. That's unfortunate. No yeah. immediate Growlithe spawn. He already Oof, has a Pidgey awesome. and a rat, so... Gets the... Bad Jigglypuff cycle as well. Usually on Jigglypuff you want to throw the ball immediately because it likes to start floating away very slowly, which not only makes it hard to hit, but also it just takes a very long time for it to stay still again if it starts floating once. So you really want to get that ball out there. But occasionally it can also go for the attack on the first cycle, which makes you not only waste balls, but also lose out on some experience. Okay, yeah, then I'm going for that Pidgeotto catch that I mentioned uh, mm -hmm. for additional experience. Uh, this does mean he won't be able to go for the Pidgeotto evolution later. But it should solidify. Ooh, nice yeah, perfect. Solidify his mid game experience. All right, Crisis now going onto the same route, seeing if he can find his Growlithe quickly. Also, nothing so far. And uh, meanwhile, when Eevee gets there, it's uh, there is no Growlithe uh, spawns in the Eevee version. Um, so instead, there is a ah. Vulpix. Ooh, there's Dynam's Growlithe. Yeah. Getting it late is kind of unfortunate because you ideally you want to uh, get, let the Growlithe hit level 18 before you reach Route 9, since that will uh, greatly improve some ranges later. Catching it last here means that it's going to be level 17 still. It's better than not getting it for sure, but uh, yeah. Ideally you want to see it first, unless the thing that you see first is an Abra. Yeah, I think and... is... yeah. Oh, go ahead. I think has just got a breakout from that Jiggly Puff, right? Yeah, he did. That is unfortunate. Um, yeah, and speaking of Route 9, there's uh, only one fight that's going to happen between now and then, uh, so not any opportunities to gain meaningful experience. Exactly. Uh, Dynam just... Ah, perfect. Krasis gets a Growlithe. Uh, Dynam just managed to pull off the second trainer skip in the game. I call it Vermilion Skip, uh, where you can just go right down the center between the two trainers that are facing, facing each other at the end of Route 6. Uh, they both only have one Pokemon, so they're relatively easy to defeat, but it's still very annoying to hit them. And uh, Dynam managed to avoid that. And... Uh, yeah. We'll have to pass them again on the way back. Um, it's a little bit easier. Most runners, I think, would agree to do it on the way back because you, there are some more visual cues to line yourself up with. Um, but it can definitely happen either way. Even crisis. That was a mean rat attack. I'm trying to throw them off. <laughs> <laughs> manages to get it. Perfect. Uh, yeah, for some reason, it is actually harder for me leaving Vermilion. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but if I fade it, I fade it on the way out. I don't know why. 
yeah, I feel like it's probably pretty even for me. Uh, it's, you know, with the, the Joy-Cons, it can be uh, going directly straight is easier said than done. So it can be very easy for your stick to kind of slide a little bit. And um, if that happens at the wrong moment or if it happens right before the pass and you kind of panic, uh, it can be easy to mess up. I personally uh, consider the Vermilion skip to be the hardest of the trainer skips, of the unmounted trainer skips, that is. Right. Yeah, I think it would probably, I would probably agree with that. Some people will say Alexa, but um, I think once you know what you're doing with Alexa, it's a little bit easier to get it consistently. Yes. Vermilion gets a Vulpix here, which is the equivalent version exclusive to Growlithe. Not as useful for the run, but it's still definitely nice to have. Uh, especially because you can choose to evolve it into nine tails later if you still need an additional catch. And the added XP always helps. Um, definitely. Going into the next fight. Um, Speaking yeah. of the next fight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that I'm going into the, right, the next rival fight on the SSN. Yes. And we're just gonna see uh, the Pikachu go for Zippy Zap here, which is uh, the one Zippy Zap PP that you definitely need for this fight. Gonna boost that Pika with an X attack, and that is more than enough for the one shot on the Pidgeotto. This Eevee you could also Zippy Zap if you still have enough PP, which Dynam has, goes for Zippy Zap again. And then just helping hand, use helping hand on uh, the Growlithe. Helping hand, a move that is only useful in double battles or in this situation, 2v1 battles, where uh, the Pokemon will use its turn to buff the other Pokemon's attack. Yeah, we didn't That's... really mention this, but you can pull out the, two, the second controller for any battle in the game uh, and just make it completely unfair by using two Pokemon against their one Pokemon. And you can even do that mid-battle, so... Yeah. It is truly unfair for the NPCs. <laughs> so you'll see that, especially during the rival fights, that we'll be often using uh, in both games to controlling the fight. And while Dynam gets the secret technique, uh, that'll help him progress to the next route. Let's see. Vermillion's still yeah. in route six, cleaning up. Yeah, should not be leaving. Let's see if he hits the skip. Ah, oh, unfortunately, Ooh, Pidgey. Uh, Pidgey, but at least it hit him before he uh, got into the skip. So, okay, Ooh. perfect. All three hit it on the way in. Let's see if they can also hit it on the way out. Crass has also got through level 3 without any problems. I'm pretty sure he also did catch, didn't catch catch anything after the Growlithe, so his Growlithe will also be level 17 for the Route 9 battles. If that is the case, you usually just hope that the Growlithe has good stats so that you can hit those ranges. Alright, then I'm on the way out. All good. Perfect. Uh, so I assume for the Growlithe, you're looking for a good special attack, especially? Yes. You need good special attack uh, because you're going to be using Flamethrower, which is a move that Growlithe just knows at level 17, which, um, I mean, I'm not complaining. It's great that we have that, but it <laughs> seems kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Very strong fire type move. And uh, we're specifically going to be using it for a Gloom that is on the first fight and the Sandshrew on the second fight on Route 9. Uh, seems kind of weird to use a fire type move on a ground type, but uh, it's better than anything that, oh no, the Route 5 Babra. Uh, yeah, it's better than anything Pika can do against the Sandshrew. Yeah, Sandshrew having a much, uh, I'm not sure exactly how much, but definitely a higher defense stat than special defense, so Flamethrower definitely. Um, a useful move. 
All right, and Crisis doing his second attempt at the skip. Plus a headset. This EV is a bit tricky. It is much uh, more annoying for EV version. Uh, Pika can just go for double kick with another X attack here. But I'm pretty sure you have to be level 20 to have that double kick be guaranteed. Uh, it can be arranged at lower levels, but uh, Danim did hit that, I think. So no problem here. And uh, now faces that gloom that I was talking about since. Growlithe is still level 17, it's not guaranteed to knock out this Gloom in one hit. But does hit the range here. And Christ is about to take on the same fight. Um... Yeah, they're very close to each other right now. And considering that Crisis is two pokes ahead, this is very close still. Between our part 1 and part 2 runners. Definitely. And Vermillion isn't lagging too far behind either. No, especially with 18 catches themselves. Uh, definitely. Uh, still on a respectable pace. Alright, now for the even scarier fight. The Sancho Radicates on Route 9 for Dynam here. Uh, since the Growlithe did hit the range, or was able to Oko the Gloom, Dynam is probably pretty optimistic about this one as well. If the Sancho survives, it can go for Sand Attack, which is still very annoying. It can also go for Dig, which... Okay, we don't see that. That's perfect. Uh, it can also go for Dig, which can one-shot both Pikachu and Growlithe, depending on HP on the Pika. Uh, and since the Pikachu is minus defense, I'm pretty sure it would have been a one-shot if it had gone for Dick. Luckily, we don't see it. Growlithe hits the range. Yeah, and taking damage on this fight isn't too detrimental because you're about to get a free heal right afterwards, but uh, definitely getting knocked out is, uh, you know, wastes a lot of time and it's not ideal. Yeah. If the Growlithe gets knocked out, you lose that X special attack that you used on the Growlithe turn one. And of course, Pikachu just has very high damage potential, so if it dies before the Radicate comes out, that's just very annoying to recover from. Oh, apparently Danim forgot to mark a catch, so uh, it was actually just one catch ahead, uh, one, one catch behind Crisis. But it's now on 18, since uh, he apparently got the double Moonstone and is using that second leftover Moonstone to evolve the Jigglypuff and immediately deposit it now. Alongside the Growlithe and the Pidgeotto. And so what is he saving that other Moonstone for? The other Moonstone we're gonna see in a second here when uh, Dynam enters Route 10. Uh, the second Moonstone is reserved in Pika version for he waits for the spinner for uh, one of the Nidos. So, uh, Nidoran male, ideally, yes, perfect. Both spawn, actually. Nidoran male is the partner Pokemon of choice for the next part of the game for Pika version. It is a very strong Pokemon. Uh, and it comes knowing both Stab, Poison Jab, and Helping Hands, uh, which are the two main moves that it's going to be using for us. And it needs a Moonstone to evolve, so... Ah, oh, no. Ooh, the I thought that the was good. Left training here. Eevee luckily one-shots both of the Pokémon in either of the fights. This one has a uh, Charmander, so you can just bounce the bubble out, but it's still like 30 seconds-ish of time loss. But yeah, then I'm getting excellent spawns on Route 10. Uh, both Nidos and the Spiro. Those are the three main Pokemon that you can really only catch on Route 10. So you really love to see them. You can also get uh, Krabby, which mm -hmm. is a slightly worse catch because it needs four levels to evolve. But of course, if you see it, you usually go for it just to have that catch. And since both Dynam and Crisis went for the early red, they also are would like to see Eradicate here. Eradicate gives a lot of experience for this point in the game. I think it's like 
around 1000 if it's a regular eradicate. So uh, it's a very nice catch to get here for experience purposes. And I did see three eradicates on Crisis' screen. Let's see. Then also gets one. Just going for the Nidoran female here now. And Vermillion is entering Route 9, so do you want to explain what the EV has to do for the Route 9 battle? Sure. Yes, uh, so for this first Picnicker fight, uh, we are... Uh, actually, for both fights, we're going to be one controllering uh, on the EV side, so it'll be... Uh, you know, you're not relying on uh, a Growlithe or something like that to spawn uh, on Route 6, because EV can handle it itself. But you do have to do a little bit of setup, uh, first, uh, we're going to set up a guard spec because the EV that uh, Vermillion will be facing off against has three status moves, moves that can lower your stats. Uh, sand attack, tail whip, and growl. And using that guard spec will make sure that none of those are going to be affecting you. Um, and then after using that, we're going to be setting up an X attack to make sure that uh, you can do some more meaningful damage on the EV itself. And to one-shot the Gloom afterwards with Sizzly Slide. Um, and assuming let's see, he's at level 19, shouldn't have too much trouble with this. Uh, you know, it might take usually a headbutt and a sizzly slide can take care of the Eevee, uh, and one sizzly slide can take out the Gloom. And then in the following fight, um, hopefully he will hit level 20 uh, for the Sand Shrew. Um, that can definitely help to ensure the bouncy bubble uh, one hit K. Of, uh, the Sand Shrew. Uh, the HP heal is, is nice, but uh, more importantly, as Triv mentioned earlier, the Sand Attack and Dig are uh, can be a big waste of time and you don't want to see those. Yeah. Uh, now, I was looking a bit at the catches while you were explaining that, and both Dynam and Crisis missed the excellent on Radicate, so lost out on quite a bit of experience there, mm. uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but at least they both got one, so they could cross it off their tracker. And are now on this grunt fight right next to the Pokemon Center. You do get the free heal here, so all of their PP is restored. Uh, Crest is opting for the 2C strat, which used to be the go-to strat here. Uh, just using an X special attack and using Thunderbolt to take out the Radicate. Pikachu just learns Thunderbolt naturally at level 21, which is... A very strong electric type move. Uh, it's going to be especially useful for one boss fight later on. Then I'm also going for the 2C strats. Some runners have started to do a 1C fight against this Rally Cage. But this one is definitely the safest. Uh, I'm not quite sure what their experience situation is here. Looks like 23 for uh, Dynam Speaker. Maybe could have gone for the 1C fight here. Actually, just and saying, gonna delete 2C fights from the notes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, at this point, as you're, you mentioned you were checking their EXP or uh, situation, what level are you, when you're doing Pika runs, kind of shooting for going into Rock Tunnel? Oh, usually I, w I would want to see level 23 on that fight uh, because well, it used to be with the 2C strats that you could uh, just skip an X item there and instead use Helping Hand uh, if you hit that experience threshold. But um, the experience entering Rock Tunnel is nowhere near as important as the experience exiting Rock Tunnel because there are some very high experience catches in there. And experience is mostly going to be important for the fights after Rock Tunnel. So as long as you're like level 22, 23, uh, you should be good. The minion now entering Route 10 here. Uh, just gonna do an extra deposit for looking at the catches. EV version is not reliant on the Nido. There are some optional Need a King strats that you can do, but... Oh, nice, Red Charmander Ooh, on Dynam's screen. 
so it's a very rare spawn. Also pretty hard to catch with just the Great Ball, so let's hope he can get it here first try and doesn't get any breakouts. Does hit the excellent, perfect. Yeah, even with excellent double greats and the res, it's uh, still not a guarantee. gets the catch. But gets Amazing. it. Uh, and Charmander, a nice grab uh, when you can get it, because it only takes one level to evolve, and just an extra two Pokemon for your tracker that you weren't anticipating on getting. Yeah, it is one of those rare spawns that only happen like 0.5% of the time. But yeah, uh, back to what I was saying earlier about EP version and Route 10, you're not really reliant on the Nidos. You really only want to get them for the catch con and the little bit of experience that they provide. Uh, if you do have two Moonstones in Pika, you can use it to evolve one of the Nidos, but you definitely always want to use one on Jigglypuff because uh, Jigglypuff is the only Moonstone evolution that does not try to learn a move on evolution. So it is the optimal Pokemon to use the Moonstone on. Class is just stepping <laughs> into a key run here, which is a good thing. That is one of the catches that you want to see in Rock Tunnel. Uh, it is another one of those Pokemon that needs four levels to evolve. So usually when you have a high catch count, you're not necessarily going to be waiting around for the Cubone, but getting it here, obviously the best and correct choice to just catch it. Yeah, as you mentioned earlier, the Krabby being uh, one of those four level evolutions along with uh, Cubone and Machop, which we'll also see in Rock Tunnel. Um, so they are sitting in your party for quite a while, um, but uh, again, having um, you know, taking those level ups can be worth uh, the time just to have a guaranteed catch. And Dynam Evolving is Nidorino. Yeah, he just killed his party uh, because there was a Graveler spawn. Graveler is. gives a high amount of experience, so you really don't want to um, waste that on Pokemon that don't want that experience anymore because they are not going to evolve anytime soon. So uh, yeah, also just getting the Charmander in so that that can benefit off of the Graveler experience. And the other thing that you really want to catch in Rock Tunnel, okay, three Gravelers, oh, yeah. that is kind of, <laughs> kind of unfortunate, just a big old road, roadblock. Uh, the only thing, the other thing that you really want to catch in Rock Tunnel is the Rhyhorn, that is uh, another one of those Pokemon that will increase your movement speed when you ride on it. Oh, I think we lost Dynam's feet. I think they all might have frozen for a sec, but hope oh, there's Crisis back. All right. Hopefully everything will be come back into view sh shortly. Yeah. Looks like Dynam's just catching the Graveler. Um, yeah, you can ride the Rhyhorn, it's going to increase your movement speed. You really want to get it here because it's going to save you a bunch of time just based on like speeding up your movement. Uh, Pikachu can go for a very early uh, Arcanine with the first on that is on Route 8, I believe is the correct number. Uh, but getting the Rhyhorn is just always what you want to see and it's especially important for Eevee because it cannot go for the Arcanine so it will not have a right at all for the foreseeable future in the run if it doesn't get the right horn. Ooh, Kress is getting low battery warning. That is I early did... in the run to get that. Yeah, he did mention that he is using some third-party controllers that have he can plug in like a USB into his controllers while he's playing. Um, so I think he'll be okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that is good to hear. Although I feel like having uh, a cable attached to your controller yeah. while you're doing catches with motion controls can be a little bit annoying. Let's hope it doesn't impact him too badly. All right, looks like Dynam getting, uh, seeing a frame of getting Machop on the screen. Who else to be and... the trainer fight against the Machop? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Vermilion uh, now entering Rock Tunnel and getting an instant Cubone, which is a nice start. Yes. Shit. 
shiny Charmander, says Dynam. We can't see it. Apparently, his uh, feet is a little bit delayed here. That is quite exciting. Sadly, he al already has one. <laughs> so, it's not worth it to go for. Well, Dynam, they will have to clip it afterwards to show us. <laughs> and maybe post it in the Discord to, so we can all take a look at the shiny Char. I'm just looking at the screen right now, waiting for it to appear. <laughs> Probably on the next floor. <laughs> oh, is that, is that it? I don't know. I actually don't know what uh, shinies look like in, in Rock Tunnel. It looked like it was sparkling a bit. May have been it then. Still no Rhyhorn though, I think. For either Dynam or Crisis, or Vermillion, for that matter. The Vermillion just entered Dark Tunnel, so. So, some time. Uh, let me check the tracker. Yeah, Ryan is not marked on any of them. It's just a glowing wood shop, okay. Mm. Yeah, you'll see, it is, you know, dark in Rock Tunnel, obviously, but not, you know. Just, so dark that you can't see to get around, but uh, seeing those smaller spawns, especially the ones that sometimes look like each other, I know sometimes I, you know, see what I think is a Charmander, and then it turns out to just be another Machop, and <laughs> can be a little hard to distinguish them at times. There is, like in the original games, there is a field move that you can pick up uh, to have light in this area, but it is pretty far out of the way and not worth it to go for considering we can see perfectly fine even in the dark in this game. Yeah, there's a whole cutscene and a whole, you know, gotta go through Diglett's Tunnel and it's really not worth the time. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you also ha have to beat Search for it, which we're not gonna do for quite some time. Mm. I may, I may be wrong about that. I don't know what the prerequisite is. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I just know that the last time I I was like flying around on Aerodactyl in, you know, post game doing mm. stuff and then randomly get stopped by an NPC like, come on inside and we'll teach you Flashy Flash or whatever it's called. And it was very alarmed like why an NPC was stopping me in the post game. Like I thought I'd done everything. No, you missed that super important thing. Mm hmm For that one <laughs> place and nowhere else. Well that's the Rhyhorn, just spawning while uh Dynam's waiting for the spinner. A little late. Of course you do want to get it as early as possible, but better late than never. So yes. definitely gonna go for it here. Cross has also got it in the meantime. So the Rhyhorn, not only a fast Pokemon, but also a solid source of EXP as well for your party. Yes, it is actually pretty unfortunate for Dynam now that I think about it, that he got the Rhyhorn last here, because Rhyhorn also important for Pika version, since you're going to be using that for the next fight against Jesse and James. And uh, ideally you want it to be level 25 by then, but it's usually not going to be at that level if you catch it last. So, oof, also unfortunate rare on spawn here. But yeah, mm -hmm. in the spinners, just has the optional uh, optional encounter that is better than hitting the trainer fight. And you've already been seeing the Nidoking King used by both Danum and Crisis in some 2C fights. Crisis in the fight against the Ace Training here with a Vulpix and a, a Kadabra. Mm -hmm. Having that Pokemon with Helping Hand is especially important for Rhyhorns on enemy teams. Uh, we've already seen one here in Rock Tunnel and there's going to be another one later on. Because Pikachu just doesn't have a reliable way of dealing with Rhyhorn since it's immune. Uh, to electro type moves. So the only thing that Pikachu can really do is use double kick, but uh, 
even then Ryron has very high physical defense. So you really need that extra little bit of bonus that you get from helping hand. Let's see, Dynam now officially out of Rock Tunnel at about a 117.30. And Crisis on the last battle of Rock Tunnel. Uh, taking care of the Meowth and Vulpix. And Vermilion, I believe he just caught a Graveler, so he's been sitting on some evolution screens for a little while. Yeah, that is bound to happen in Roxana. You get those, all of those Pokemon in Route 10 that evolve within one level, and then they just evolve back to back to back, and you sit there for two minutes just watching things evolve. And I'm heading into another rival fight. Yes, this is rival four in Pokemon Tower. Uh, Pikachu does it with Pikachu and the Nidoking, King. Ideally, you can also do this fight and this strat in general with uh, Nido Queen. Uh, Nido Queen has a slightly worse attack stat and also learns Crunch instead of Poison Jab, so it doesn't have that stab move. Uh, but having Crunch as a dark type move uh, can also be useful for one fight later in Hideout. So uh, it's usually a very good backup strat if you don't see a Nidoran Mayor. Now the strat for this fight is just to pump the Nidoking with two X attacks, and then it'll poison jab both the Gloom and the Jolteon for you. Then I'm at 727 on this fight, which... It's a pretty good spot to hit that. Should probably hit level 28 for the boss gauntlet at the end <laughs> of Hideout. And on Crisis' screen, he's just doing the exact same fight. A couple of Pokemon's behind, Pokemon behind here. <laughs> the minus attack doesn't really affect the fight, this fight at all. So you can just Thunderbolt the Pidgeotto. Which of course is a special move, and then the Nidoking takes care of the rest. So using the Nidoking, you're obviously taking a little bit of a gamble that the Nidoking is going to have solid attack stat. Um, yeah. Does that come into play in this fight, or is it more so later fights that that's going to be a, uh, a potential issue? Um, I don't think there are any important ranges that the Nidoking could miss if it has a really bad attack, but there are some nice ranges that you could hit with a decent Nidoking later, uh, just saving you a turn or two. So... Um, yeah, of course you do want to see a good Little King, but a bad Little King isn't going to ru ruin your run. It's just going to waste gotcha. a little bit of time. Yeah, uh, Dan, I'm already swapped the Little King into the first set of party here, since Little King is going to be the lead Pokemon for the next couple of fights. Uh, for instance, the next fight that Dan is going to face here is a fight against the Clefairy. Uh, that Clefairy has a metronome, which just uses one move out of the entire Gen 1 move pool at random. Uh -huh. And that can be quite annoying. So the Nida King will just go for Poison Jab. Poison Jab is super effective against the Fairy type to Fairy. So it's just going to be a one shot uh, and we don't have to worry about Metronome. Eevee version does not have that luxury if it doesn't go for Nida King strats. Or hits level 28 before that fight, because Headbutt is not able to one-shot the Clefairy. And unless you get a flinch, which of course can still happen, you're going to see at least one roll of Metronome. And there's some very annoying combinations that you can get. I remember I once got, uh, I want to say, Sleeping Powder into Roar. Oof. So I put my Eevee to sleep and then switched it out. Which, uh, yeah, that was pretty annoying. I think I've gotten... The most common move I've gotten is Thunder Wave. I've gotten that two or three times. And <laughs> having to waste a Paralyzed Heal like that is not fun. 
through. I don't think I've ever seen Panda Wave, but that sounds pretty annoying. And I've gotten Recover, I think, twice, which if you're on Eevee version, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just frustrating it just... to have another headbutt. Well, we might see that when Vermillion gets that fight. It's just gonna be fighting the Vulpex, Kadabra, Ace Trainer. Uh, if he does that fight with one controller, usually, uh, which is a little bit dangerous, you're gonna be setting up on the Vulpex, but uh, that means that the Vulpex gets to hit you once with Flamethrower, which has a chance of burning with the Eevee, and you really don't wanna see that. Good. We didn't see that. Yeah, typically if you get burned, you can try healing it and although you're risking taking other hits, um, or you can bring out the second controller as a safer strat, which uh, will take a little bit longer because summoning the second controller mid-battle has that animation, but it does guarantee that you're going to be able to knock out the Vulpix and heal your burn on the next turn. Denim was just uh, sorry. Uh, Denim also just enters the Pokemon Center in Cerulean City, where uh, you can talk to the NPC with an Abra and synchronize the game, which basically just means that you force one nature for the entire rest of the day on your Switch system. And we are going to be choosing modest nature here. You can't choose it directly, but there's a reliable way to just always choose the same two answers and get modest out of it. Modest, of course, is the nature that boosts your special attack while lowering your attack, and that is going to be important for our late game main. Are we going to spoil that or keep it a secret? That late main <laughs> I mean, this is, is a, this is a dedicated tournament, so I think we can just say that it's Starmie. <laughs> I'm too used to doing commentary for this game for people who are entirely unfamiliar. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we don't know. Somebody could be waiting to pull out Kabutop's stab, stab, uh, strats. <laughs> I doubt it. I didn't pay attention uh, which of the fossils the runners picked up in Mount Moon. Yeah, I think they might have all sold them anyway, so probably not. <laughs> uh, yeah, it depends on which strat they are using. There is a backup strat where you pick up the PP up instead, and all of the runners did pick up the PP up. Um, and then sell that and keep the fossil in case that you need those two extra catches later and don't have a better backup. Because you're going to be on Cinnaba Island anyway. And even though it's a bit of a detour to go into the lab and let those fossils be turned back into Pokemon, sometimes in a race situation you could just not have any better option. And it looks like the chat is saying that Dynam did keep the Helix fossil, so yes. keeping that option open and uh, if, <laughs> if they don't have to do Magmar as well, as Dynam has shown a recent affinity for. I wasn't paying attention to, Den to Denim's screen here. Did the Nether King die on the Hypno fight, or why did I just see him in shop? Um, I missed it as well, so... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if uh, he maybe switched Machop for the previous fight um, to Brick Break the Radicate and just yeah. used it again. But we will maybe see when he if he opts to heal before this fight. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Interesting, interesting. Now, Vermillion is on the Rebel 4 fight right now and sees right to come at second, which is kind of unfortunate for EP version because now he'll have to use Drill Run on Rhyhorn, which is 95% accurate, so has a chance of missing, but does get the hit here. Uh, it is random what Rival sends out in this fight against Eevee. C it can be either Gloom or Raichu's second. And if Gloom comes out second, you can just keep buffing the Eevee. Because plus two CC side takes out the Gloom and then plus four headbutt would take out the Raichu. But if Raichu comes out second, you really have to rely on Drill Run because plus two headbutt would not be enough. For million opting to, instead of using an X attack on Eevee, just. Sizzly Slide Drill Run, which um, Interesting. 
a little bit riskier, but it saves the time of menuing for an item. Yeah, and potentially also just saves an X attack if his count yeah. is low. Uh... Dynamon Crest is still back to back here. Dynamon the muck, uh, on the <laughs> grammar fight, and Crest is just one fight behind on the on the Radata fight. It's a very close. Now Dynam starting the one platforming section, I suppose, <laughs> of the run. Uh, I guess you could call it that. Up. Yeah, that will come up and never be used again. Of actually taking control of Pikachu and moving it around. After we stand on the rolly chair, and yes, of course, it's game obligatory. Moving. Yeah. Obligatory, Osha. don't do this at home, kids. Yeah. <laughs> Just gonna swap the party around here and heal uh, this Pokemon up a little bit, uh, and it's actually gonna swap the Rhyhorn into slot one because Pikachu uses Rhyhorn and Nidoking for the upcoming fight against Jesse and James. I was talking about this a little bit earlier, but you want to use Drill Run to take out both of those poison types. I didn't see if Dynam ended up hitting level 25, but like I said, usually if you catch Rhyhorn last in uh, Rock Tunnel and don't catch anything on like Route 7 or 8, that doesn't happen in time. All right, Vermillion getting the flinch on the Clefairy, so no nonsense happening with <laughs> Metronome. Yeah, as a race, I would definitely appreciate that, but as a as a viewer here yeah, would we'll love to see yeah. some <laughs> yeah. a little bit of action just like obviously i don't want i don't want vermilion to lose time over this but just wanted to see what he would get maybe yeah like a horn drill miss would have been fun yeah for sure i've also seen like always funny uh the self distract but sure damage, that yeah. deals some damage but it's still a one turn because the clefairy just takes itself out mm -hmm. Then I'm just now doing the last platform puzzle here, and uh, so then gonna enter the boss gauntlet that I was talking about, where you fight three boss fights back to back in the bottom floor of Hideout. This is a pretty tricky part of the run. Uh, you always want these fights to go well, and especially the Justin James fight here, that is first out of the three. Yeah. I so think, back, yeah. I was just going to say that as a, you know, beginning run, newer runner, this section can often be a, not a make or break point, but, you know, can often add a lot of um, time to your early runs because it requires yeah. a lot of adapting to how the enemy attacks and decides to damage you um, and uh, definitely takes some getting used to to be able to uh, respond and adapt on the fly. Uh, Vermillion just picked up the fourth special move that Eevee gets uh, here in Saladin Center with uh, Glitzy Glow. Chose to override Buzzy, but uh, sorry, Sissy Slide with it. So it's going for the older but safer strats. Not quite optimal, but uh, it does mean that he will, will still be able to paralyze this Radicate that is coming up here for him and doing something that I've done multiple times, which is you're mashing before that rocket and you pick up a hidden item in the game corner <laughs> accidentally. All right, Denim got through Justin James and Cross is now entering that fight. Seems like for Dynam only the Rhyhorn was really damaged, which is perfect because 
you don't really have to worry about the Raihan's HP after this point. So he's just able to swap it to the back, swap the Pika back into first slot and not have to worry about healing or anything. Ooh. And whereas I think Dynam was able to get that one shot in the Arba drill, drill run, uh, Crisis was not. Yeah. Still level 24, which means that that one shot is not the greatest range. Can take it out in the second turn here, but that does mean that it's a that there's no chance of a two turn fight. Nidhi King just got burned, which is interesting. It doesn't really matter. I mean, it does add status lag, but uh, Nidhi King doesn't attack after this point. The only thing that it does is use Helping Hand and X items. So the burn doesn't matter too much. Like shifting all between all three screens, trying to keep track of <laughs> how each fight is doing and which ones, you know, who's in the most danger. Yeah, this part of the, of the run is very fight heavy, so keeping track of all of that at the same time, it's a lot. It seems that Crassus did have to heal after this fight. And it's now also going to swap Pikachu back in the lead for. The Archer fight. Oh, yeah, this is the part of the run where Minus Attack Pikachu is a little unfortunate to have because if he hasn't hit level 30 on the Pikachu yet, both the Persian and the Rhyhorn on Giovanni will be a range. Mm -hmm. So uh, you really don't want to see that. Dynam shouldn't have that problem at all. Uh, he's just going to use the first turn of the fight here to use two X attacks on Pikachu. So that gets Pikachu to plus four. And then in the next turn is going to go for the Zippy Zap and use a third X attack, bringing Pikachu to plus six. And yes, plus X, plus six Zippy Zap can be a range on the Persian if you're minus attack. Ooh, crisis. I think it's getting oh, no. knocked out because after he missed the wheezing range. That is unfortunate. He's gonna have to heal that. Probably gonna. Okay, it looks like he's gonna try to finish the fight with Rhyhorn. Mm, yeah, it was a fight. But Rhyhorn also faints. Oh no. This is gonna that get outsped by the wheezing. At this point, we should probably consider just reviving the Pika mid fight. Yeah, it looks like he's yeah. gonna go for that. Already used one though, so he has to uh, probably pick up the max revive in this room that he's already in, just to make sure that he doesn't run out and uh, ends up not having another revive in a spot where he would really need one. But Dynam's down with Hideout now, uh, he's about to leave here. Okay, looks like he's picking up the extra uh, Ultra Balls that you can get here. They're a little out of the way, but it's five of them. Uh, it's a good idea to get these if you still need to catch a lot of Pokemon after this point. Uh, you now may opt to skip another Ultra Ball pickup that just contains three Ultra Balls, but is right on the path. But since every item pickup takes a little bit of time, he may opt to skip that now, that he picked up the five extras. How many Pokemon does he still need? Eight. Ah, sorry. Recount that. One, two, three, four, five, six catches, probably. Looking at his plan count, so he should be fine. Yeah. Of balls. I mean, if he sees everything that he has marked as planned, he doesn't even have to go for Tentacool. So I don't think he will be running into any of the situations where he has to go for a hard-to-catch Pokemon like Tangela or Magmar in the late game as a backup catch. 
But of course, any of those Pokemon could just end up not spawning. Yeah, then I'm also yeah. doing... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to add to that, that not having to go for Tentacle is always uh, a good idea <laughs> and a solid plan. You're in a good place if you don't have to go for that. Yeah. Uh, it's just very annoying to ca very annoying to catch since you cannot do two controller catches in the water, uh, and the tentacle also likes to move around a lot. It's, it's very annoying. Uh, I'm interested to see if Crisis can get the ranges here. Since he is level 29 still, so these are not guaranteed. Yeah, Persian survives. Hits a slash. Should go down now though. It is a little scary to get hit by the Persian. Especially, especially if he also doesn't get the Oko on Rhyhorn, since that Rhyhorn also knows Drill Run, and if he uses that on Pikachu, Pikachu's just gonna die. Let's see if he gets it. Actually, yeah, of course, goes for Double Kick and Helping Hands. Now he just has to pray. Oh, mm. that. No! Oh, okay, well. Fair. That's the better thing to get taken out here by Drill Run. Uh, yeah, he can just go for Double Kick again, probably. Yeah, shouldn't oh. be too big of a deal. That's a, a little thing. unfortunate, but yeah. uh, the new the King doesn't do any fighting after this point. Yeah, Chris is. Just had a very rough time with Hideout. But that is the downside of Minus Attack Pikachu. Looks like Vermillion went up the wrong stairs for just a little bit, but then realized the error and was able to take the elevator to the right place. Yeah, it is easy to just mesh, accidentally mesh through that elevator menu since, uh, yeah, you're. Uh, going to need to go to the fourth bottom floor, but it's not the one that the cursor is just on automatically. Also, Crassus did pick up the Max Revive that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, with some help from chat <laughs> to figure out where that was. <laughs> okay. Uh, and Dynam also picking up a safety item, picking up a Hyper Potion in the uh, tower. Yeah, that can be really nice, both for this upcoming Jesse and James fight and for the Archer double fight later in the run. Uh, because you can get hit pretty hard there, and Super Potion may not be enough to heal you back to full at that point. So having a Hyper Potion, really nice. You usually only get to buy them after those fights, especially after the Archer 2 fight. Um, so this hyper potion or the one that you can pick up in hideout are really good safety items. So all three of the runners kind of did have a similar ooh. Oh tower cubone. A tower cube a useful tower cubone is happening. Yeah. Yeah, tower cubone uh cubone can spawn in tower. It it is in theory, I think, even more common than in Rock Tunnel, but because of the way that tower works and that it has very narrow um, like halls it's very unlikely to actually show up so uh we love to see it especially because it only takes one level to evolve here instead of the four levels that the keybone in rock tunnel would take are you on the team lure for tower or don't lure i lure yes unless my lure count is bad but usually if I have like six lures left, I, I will look for a tower. Yeah. Or I'm if my catch if my if my sorry, yeah, if my catch count is high, I would probably also not lure for a tower, especially not in Pika version. Uh, um yeah, I'm typically on the other side of not luring even if my count is good, just because okay. anic it's just anecdotally that I get more spawns without it than I do <laughs> with it. But and that's probably you know, some selection bias, <laughs> but uh, it's been working all right for me so far, so I'm just rolling with it. Yeah, like I said, the 
because of the way that the tower layout works out, there's always going to be a few spawns, even with the lore. It makes mm -hmm. very little difference. Yeah, uh, Dynam just checked the Growlithe. He had withdrawn that Growlithe in the menu before he flew back to Lavender. And he used the Growlithe here to basically be a big target for both the Weezing and the Arbok, because they both would see an easy knockout on that lower level Growlithe. And now that the Growlithe is fainted, uh, Dynam can use the Firestone right after this and start riding the Arcanine instead of the Rhyhorn. And because, yeah, and since the, since the Growlithe is fainted, it won't gain any experience from the upcoming catches. And Vermillion did something similar where uh, he used the strat of taking out a fairy type Pokemon for the, uh, I believe it was the Jesse and James fight. Yeah. And using that to attract the attention of the Weezing and Arbok um, while its EV could stay um, relatively unscathed. Yeah, the fact that they, these low level and very weak Pokemon can just take one hit and die um, makes the fight much safer. Because if Eevee or Pika get hit twice in turn one, it may just die right there. Uh, you could get lucky and get something like Toxic turn one. Uh, or what I always love to see is Arbok and Weezing both using their status move on the same Pokemon in one turn. Right. So we're going for Toxic and Glare in the same turn. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's definitely not guaranteed to happen. And Dynam, now that uh, they are out of uh, Pokemon Tower, is getting ready for uh, the next big catching section of Route 17. So after evolving this Arcanine, uh, they are going to be flying over to Celadon to uh, then go to what used to be called Cycling Road and catching quite a few Pokemon. Just going to Cycling Road or uh, is the beginning of the last big catching section of the run. Uh, Cycling Road, Route 21 and Pokemon Mansion are the last three locations where we want to catch something and we're going to hit them back to back to back. So this is a very important section once again. Hopefully Pokemon Mansion is your last stop for catching. If it's not, your catch count might be in a bad spot. Yeah. Dynam should be sad now that he got the yeah. tower cube on, uh, even if a couple of things don't show up on Route 17 or 21. He should be fine. <laughs> Crest is getting <laughs> a Ghastly just as he was about to leave the last floor where Ghastly can spawn. Yeah, on, on Route 17 you're going to be looking for a couple of Pokémon Especially, or the two most important, important catches on Route 17 are going to be the Ponyta and the Dodo. A Ponyta because it evolves into Rapidash, which is one of the fastest, uh, or tied for the fastest red Pokemon you can get. Which of course is very useful for us. And then the Dodo is another one of those useful partner Pokemon for later. Uh, so, you really want to get both of those. Mm -hmm. Venom actually already saw a Dodo up there on Route 16. I'm not sure if he's going to go for that. Yeah, he is. Okay. Just want to make sure that you actually get the Dodo since you could miss out on it if you ignore it here. It's going to be slightly lower level, but it's still about some time and it still should be just as good for uh, the one fight that you would use it on. Uh, meanwhile, while Vermillion was finishing up the Giovanni fight, he actually missed uh, the bouncy bubble ra range on the Rhyhorn, but really? uh, um, Eevee toughed it out so you wouldn't, <laughs> so they wouldn't feel sad. Um, oh, Pika also gets the power of love right there. I just yeah. saw that. So uh, he was able to uh, successfully get the two shot without getting knocked out. All right, all right. Another Pika Faint for Crisis, oh no. 
Luckily, this is the last fight for Pico, so uh, yeah. don't have to worry about reviving it or anything, but not at all. Uh, not great. Just always another extra animation that you sit through while the Pico yeah. is dying and then having to send out another Pokemon. The minion now on the way to the Pokemon Tower. And Crisis on his way out of the Pokemon Tower. Mm -hmm. So, looking at Dynam's catch tracker, just looking for Psyduck and Ponyta uh, on this route, and then should be all good to go. Yeah. On the next route, that is. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. Uh, on Route 17 here, and Ponyta definitely the more uh, uh, more important one of those two to catch. The Psyduck, yeah. you know, if it doesn't spawn, it's not the end of the world. Absolutely. Uh, did just do another trainer skip, probably. I don't want to say the easiest one, but one of the easier trainer skips where you just hack the fence and can just sneak right underneath the line of sight of that trainer guarding the entrance to the route. So far, no pony spawn for Danim. Let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. We Perfect. Some. Three ponies at the same time. So, oh, and a side act. Perfect. Mm. So it gets everything we're looking for. And so right after this, Dynam is going to be, well, I was going to say he's going to rare candy the pony immediately, but on peak aversion, that might not always be the case. Yes, because uh... Because you go for the Arcanine and the Arcanine isn't that much slower than the Rapidash, you usually want to save that candy and instead let the Ponyta evolve just from catch experience. Mm -hmm. But for that to happen, the Ponyta does need to be in the party. But apparently, since he just deposited the Arcanine, he is going to go for the candy here instead. Uh, don't know if, if I agree with that, but um, it's definitely the safer way to approach this because you don't want to be there like after Blaine and still have the Ponyta unevolved. Yeah, with just two catches, the Psyduck and the Grimer coming up, um, I'm not sure if that would have met the threshold of leveling up. No, it should have been enough. The, the Psyduck's okay. glowing, uh, you get the star you. <laughs> May have needed to take the walk of shame from Mansion to Blaine's gym, but it should have definitely evolved from the Blaine experience at least. Gotcha. Anyway, this is also not bad. It's just that you use an extra candy here. I uh, could have, we would have been able to skip the rare candy in uh, Sifco, which isn't the biggest time loss if you do end up going for it, but uh, yeah, just a little extra. Price is stumbling onto an Eevee and I'm gonna go for it. Going for it, okay, this is a very rough catch, especially if you don't have Silver Razzles. It's gonna use a, a regular Raspberry here and probably also gonna, no, nope, opts for one, Ultra one, great. This is a not very favorable. Then I'm also going for Eevee apparently. Yeah, also oh my going goodness. for it. <laughs> he does have Silver Razzles though. Crisis breaks out, unfortunate. Okay, Dynam goes for double ultra with the silver ass, so this should be much more likely to say in. Yeah, gets and the catch first try. Oh, and and Dynam is switching to double suck. ultras. This is just unfortunate for Crisis. Yeah, another Oof. breakout here. I think he should just. Cut his losses and go. Don't catch it. Don't fall prey to the sunken cost fallacy. Okay. 
did get the accident that time though. Let's hope it stays in. Okay, there finally. We go. But two breakouts is so annoying. So yeah, Dynam is done now, I think. It still needs to catch the Sayu. Ah, and he needs the grammar. So two more catches here and that's it. We'll apparently also go for the Firestone to evolve the uh, Eevee into Flareon, at least if his tracker is to be believed. Yeah, so uh, Flareon, the typical choice if you're going to catch Eevee, uh, because the Firestone is much more accessible than uh, finding another Waterstone or a Thunderstone. Yeah, this uh, Eevee catch is basically the trade-off for the Pikachu catch that Eevee version can get in Forest. One a little bit more difficult than the other. Yeah, the Eevee catch definitely more difficult, uh, but you do get the opportunity to evolve it out of it, where you're never going to evolve the Pikachu in Eevee version, since that would need a Thunderstone, and I don't think there's one in a convenient location, so... Yeah, I believe you'd have to go to Power Plant or buy one and sell it on yeah. for that. Yeah. All right, Denim just picked up Sea Skim, the surf equivalent here, where you can surf on the water and is now going to fly to Pala Town and enter Route 21, where we will see the first style you catch of the run. And as was mentioned at the very start of this uh, race, we're going to be looking at the CP again after not having looked at it since the very first catch. Um, and let's see the CP of the star. 1062. Pretty average. Perfectly av yeah, perfectly average. Uh, again, CP is kind of a made up number. Yeah, it could be, you know, this star could have great attack and terrible special attack or vice versa um, we won't really know until uh, we rare candidates to see the stats spread but of course the highest the cp is the more likely it is that those important stats are good i believe the range on these stars is like mid 900s to 11 mid 1100s yeah something like that so this is perfectly in the middle uh very interested to see the stats here as soon as dynam gets to the menu probably gonna wait for a bit here yeah go to the grammar catch next this is going to be the last catch for him. Unless he opts to go for a magma over the firestone or something. No magma today, okay? <laughs> and getting the Doduo do do evolution, so uh, as you were kind of referencing that Dynam has tried using Magmar on Blue before as a replacement for either Dodrio or Rapidash, but uh, Dodrio uh, is evolving and it's a, kind of the classic safe option for that fight when it comes up. Yeah, there's a couple of options to go for that fight. I, I think we're gonna talk about them when the fight comes up, but uh, yeah, don't do definitely the safest of the options. So we always love to see it when we get it. I think, yeah, I think Cress is now done on mm -hmm. Route 17, taking a safe path through the trainers. And then also going to pick up C-Skim. And then Vermilion getting ready to face a well, run from the Snorlax and then begin Route 17. Yes.
And, and I'm not doing... Nice, <laughs> yeah. A nice muck blocking the way after this fight. <laughs> Unfortunate. Let's see where the Stami sets. That's wise. Ooh. Not the best rush attack. Also not the best speed. This is... The speed is actually a little worrying. Uh, special attack is okay-ish. Not great, though. Yeah, it, it could be worse, but uh, not exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, definitely not needed to go for the level 46 here, I think, to uh, not get outsped by Nine Tails and Rapidash on the main fight. In generally, generally, if you, when you use the first candy on Star, you you never want to see a seven. Mm -hmm. Like, you, uh, I think the Star you had 90, uh, 79 uh, special attack at level forty three, and that's not great. Yeah, ideally you'd like to see something in the high eighties, uh, and at least start use. Or start your speed is a little bit higher than its special attack, so uh, something in the 90s for that. But, uh, you know, this is the star we've got, and it's still workable and uh, can make it to the end game. Just might, uh, <laughs> might not, might miss a few ranges along the way. Yeah, a diamond just sabotaging the, uh, <laughs> the vote here in chat by using a repel, thus completely bypassing any potential... <laughs> any potential chancy spawns here. Uh, and Crest should just be coming up on the Staryu catch, right? Or did I miss it already? I hope I didn't. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Going one. Let's see what we get. Ten eighty three. Okay, that's a little better than what Dynam got. Oh, Crest has ran out of Ultra Balls. That is unfortunate Ooh. because, yeah, catching anything in the water with just a great ball is really annoying. Oh no! Yeah, I was afraid of that. Crest is just having a time with catches today, and that is. Very really unfortunate. Let's see. Meanwhile, Vermilion uh, has his pony. Going to be leveling that up. And Dynam almost done with Mansion after getting past this last spinner. I think he cancelled the repels, so there's one last option to get a chancy spawn here. <laughs> But I doubt it. No, I think it's over. <laughs> wow. So much for that. All right, looks like Krasus is going for the star menu now. Adds him to the party, gets rid of some other stuff. Ooh, interestingly, Hasn't added Ponyta yet, so probably has to candy it now. Ah, that's amazing special attack. Yes. Much better star than what Denim has. Denim now on the quiz, by the way. Don't want to accidentally get one of those questions wrong because that will trigger an optional battle. Luckily, they are all very easy questions. Not going for the what's that on the tombstone question, though. <laughs> I didn't know that was also a correct answer until very recently. Yeah, I think I learned it for one of the races <laughs> during this marathon, during this uh, event. And now I'm playing for Dynam. 
I, I didn't see the speed at 46 for Stami. Since it was pretty low before, he might still get out sped by Rapidash or have a speed tower or something like that, even at 46. Let's get the turn one flank. Oh, gets though, the so. burn. Oh, gets oh. the burn. So we'll have to heal immediately after the fight, which is a little slow. Also means he just gets a burn tick every turn. Mm -hmm. And the status lag, he really don't want to get burned on lane. Okay, let's hope that Rapidash does not speed the star here. Nope, that comes the flare blitz. Good, okay. Holds on, but takes quite a bit of damage. Oh. No, that's just the night has left after the switching. Yeah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Is this gonna be a range? Oh, no, 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 it's not gonna be a range, I okay. think. Uh, it's not bad minimum special attack. Uh, it should be fine, yeah. Uh, it's just, if, yeah, I mean, if you missed the range, you just would have died there. Uh, that was called, but it ended up working out for Dynam. And looks like Crisis got uh, his Grimer, so that should be the last catch uh, for his run. Just needs to do some evolutions. And yes. Vermillion, I think, is just going to have the star to catch. Yeah, looking at the trackers, that seems to be the case. Apparently, each and every one of our runners here is going to go for the Fire Stone. Uh, Crisis and Dynam both going to be using that to evolve. Eevee into Flareon, and Vermillion is going to use it to evolve Vulpix into Ninetales. Oh no, it's an uh, optional on 17. I saw he was panicking a little bit uh, after those Doduo blocked his way. But uh, I don't know what, what Pokemon's in slot 1. Ooh, and 3 Pokemon question. on this optional. Yeah, oh, also this! Oh god, you hate to see the Executor. This and is going to be rough. Is a, that's probably a smart move. Yeah, probably. Because the team is in, in a weird state at this point. You don't really have a main Pokemon. So you have all of these things that just about evolved. They're not very strong. So... That's such an unfortunate optional to hit. The only thing worse would be to hit one of the optionals on the water on Route 21. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I think we have seen a couple this tournament already. Because uh, those are even stronger. And you usually don't have the Sami yet. Yeah, you usually don't have a Pokemon with you that's going to have something that's super effective against those Mons either. Yeah, this trainer just has a Starmie too. Ugh. Ooh, Vermillion just used his last super potion. That's not great. Because you really need those for the upcoming fights here. There is a backup sword you can do without buying extra healing items. You can delay teaching Thunderbolt to Starmie and instead keep recover. Mm. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, because the first fight that you need Thunderbolt for is Sabrina. So, uh, you can delay Thunderbolt till after you get the Saffron Chop and get all of those Hyper Potions. We just usually teach it on the menu after search because uh, we can combine it with healing this army back to full in preparation for Blue and Archer. And also potentially with using the Firestone. Mm -hmm. so oh like... no! <laughs> Crisis with the next uh -oh, optional. No. Mansion optional, also very annoying. Uh, I've never hit this one. Okay, only has one Pokemon, but it is an Electabuzz. You never want to see an Electric type. 
Let's start me. So Vermillion did make it out of the fight and okay. got some Ultra Balls out of it. <laughs> well, well, that's something, I guess. Uh, I just got to X Special Attack Plus Psychic, I assume. Ooh, Rapidash does get hit here, so uh, probably has to turn around and pick up the bad heal. Actually, is that necessary? Uh, I don't think it is, if it, uh, he has Dodrio. No, because he should just get healed on the... After yeah, the Archer, yeah. or before. While on Sylph, after, yeah. Yeah, after Archer, yeah. After. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, second-guessing myself, is it before or after the fight? It is after, but if you hadn't gotten Dodrio and uh, needed the Rapidash for the blue fight, then yeah, he would have had to turn around there and take the red here to get that back to full health. Oh, I also forgot to mark the Rapidash as the right Pokemon. It looks like Vermillion is stopping the shop to buy some extra super potions. Yeah, that is... A pretty safe thing to do. This will, however, affect the money that he has for the Saffron shop now. So he may end up buying fewer hyper potions because of that. Probably will still be enough, but uh, you will need to keep that in mind. Yeah, I feel like I usually have, you know, a oh no, ten thousand or so more. Of it. Oh, crisis <sighs> messed up the question. Looks like crisis. It's really having a time right now. Another yeah. optional on Blaine. Misclicking. You really don't want to see that. Meanwhile, Dynam's just making his way through the two low level gems that we save for this part of the game because Sarmi can just steamroll right through. Uh, nothing really. Interesting that's happening uh, during those fights. You just spam Skull and Psychic and win, basically. No. Oh, you just misclicked again. Another misclick. Oh, Crisis. That's so unfortunate. Hopefully, this is also a one shot. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, hard to see. Might need to resort to pump here. No, it's just a one shot. Okay, good. Okay, just one more question here. Okay, this one. No more misclicks, and then for yep. the last one, doesn't matter. Yeah, that's the last one. Vermillion going for an interesting path down the water. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm a little scared of this. Yeah. Like I said earlier, the options on this route are super scary. We get to see what the style you has here. Uh, just pixels for me. Yeah, I'm I afraid. Tell. I did not catch the CP. Uh, 1070. 1070. Okay. Another average. All right, Crisis now on Blaine. Yes, the Confuse Ray, which usually happens. That's usually the opener for Magmar here. Uh, Denim didn't get it, but he did get burnt in return. So Crisis is getting a pretty standard Blaine fight. And because I actually didn't see his speed on this army. So I guess we'll see. I believe uh, he was pretty good. Um, yeah, I think it was good enough to outspeed the Rapidash, but... I want to say it was like mid to high 80s at when it was Staryu. Yeah, but mid 80s is too low at 46. That would get you outspeed by Rapidash. He did just outspeed it, so... Should have been fine. Alright, and Dynam is now going to go to Sylphco. Probably already swapped the Dodrio into second slot for the upcoming fight here, which is against Blue. 
Blue has the only required executor of the entire run. Executor is pretty much the hard counter, the hard counter to Starmi, because it uh, resists all three of the types that we have on the Starmi. So that's why we, why we really need another Pokemon to take care of the Executor. And like I said earlier, the best option, the safest option is the Dodrio. You can just go for Drill Pack. Very strong flying tap move. That is super effective against the Executor. Um, and then there are two other options. Usually you would have gone for Rapidash and using Fire Blast, but Fire Blast is not very accurate. So you may end up missing that, which makes the fight pretty awkward after that. And then very recently we found out that you can also use Magmar if you end up if you ended up catching that as a, an optional late game catch, because Magmar, if it's Lord, so if it's at the highest possible level, uh, can actually one shot with both Fire Punch and uh, Flamethrower with the um, corresponding ex item, of course. So X Attack plus Fire Punch or uh, X Special Attack plus Flamethrower will take care of the Executor. The mini um, runs didn't get Hydro Pump, oh no. Yeah, I was about to say that I think he accidentally Waterstone before using the candies. That is unfortunate. Really unfortunate. You can play around that, of course, uh, but that will make at least two fights pretty bad. Uh, I think I think just two Hydro Pumps are required, yes. Uh, one on Naomi and the other on Caroline, Caroline, in uh, Victory mm -hmm. Road, both of those fights. Every other Hydro Pump can, in theory, just be skipped. Yeah. And yes, and they I... can both be scalded, but uh, takes more setup turns. Yeah. And you get the risk of getting crunched, getting sucker punched on Naomi, or. Uh, Lovely kiss. I Getting guess. lovely kiss or frozen even. I mean, Skull yeah. does uh, unfreeze, but still, uh, it's our potential time loss that a hydro pump or hitting a hydro pump at least would have avoided. And that is Sandy mentioning in the chat that with an extra slot, <laughs> Vermillion could keep recover. Uh, Ooh. Just teach Thunderbolt over. Um, over. Uh, light screen? Cybeam, I believe. Or Light screen, yeah. Light screen. Of course. Just knew that I was a psychic type move. Yeah. Alright, then I'm now on Archer. The worst battle. The worst fight of the run. The worst, longest fight of the run, yes. Yes. Mm, and That's the most volatile. It's not how you want to start. <laughs> yeah. Crit Thunderbolt is unfortunate. This is still a fine opening. Yeah. Uh, this is probably where he should use the Hyper Potion. Let's see if he goes for it. No, just use with the Super. Also fine. Uh, Electro will go. Will probably go for Self Destruct here. But the Radicate will start hitting. Yeah. yeah it didn't have a thunderbolt. That is really unfortunate now. Yeah. All you can do in that situation is keep healing and hope that the electrode goes boom at some point. At or least this gives. Okay. Okay, no, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Takes up the eradicate though. Yeah, this is not a great archer fight for Denim. But at least doesn't have to deal with sucker punches. That is true. It's a five turn still, so not the worst unless he gets protect here. Or I counted the turns wrong. I think it was five in total. Which is still okay. Ideally you want to get like a four turn. The best is of course a three turn, but that is not very likely. Uh, so five turn, not optimal, but 
not the end of the world at all. Now Dynam has gotten the free heal here. Uh, so won't have to worry about any of that low health after the Thunderbolts for the next fights. And the next two fights are you know, relatively safe. Just uh, don't even have to set up on Jesse and James. And then yeah. when you have to set up to plus two on Giovanni. There are a couple annoying things that can happen here. Uh, if Weezing goes for Thunderbolt on Starmie and paralyzes, that is pretty annoying because then you will have to do another extra menu to heal the paralysis or heal the paralysis in battle and go into the Giovanni fight with some damage, which <clears throat> should usually be fine, but doesn't feel great. And then but Giovanni can also choose to, or Giovanni can also choose to go for slash instead of fake out turn one from the Persian, which can sometimes mean that you have to heal before going into Sabrina or risk getting killed by the Mr. Mime during setup. Oh. That is some exciting news. Yeah. <laughs> Just coming in from the chat. The second sub three ever. That wasn't done by Etchy. <laughs> yeah, the first non Etchy sub three by New Amber getting a 259, apparently. GG, that is an amazing time. I assume an EV version. Oh, uh, yeah, looks like EV version in the Discord. So, congratulations to them and. Um, yeah, just a even more intimidating competition for next round. Yeah, it really goes to show how fierce the competition at the top end is here. It's not a one-man show at all. Definitely not. So Crest is now on Erica, uh, Vermillion is finishing up Blaine. Yeah, I don't know if you caught um, Vermillion star stats. Um, I did not, no. I'm not too familiar with what they look like when you're Starmie. At the, but I don't think the special attack was very high. but it doesn't run into any issues on the blank fight, so. That's good. No issues yet. Okay, then I'm just getting pick out here from Persian, so won't need to do another heal before the Sabrina fight. So as Dynam exits Silvco, Crisis will be uh, approximately heading in at the same time. And after this uh, Giovanni fight, Dynam will be officially uh, getting up to 50 catches by picking up some gift Pokemon, uh, a Lapras and a Porygon. And that will uh, officially complete their tracker and grant them access to Koga's Gym. But we won't be going to Koga's Gym quite yet. Uh, we're going to save that until after Sabrina's Gym. Yes. Dynamo will also need to pick up the candy right next to the Lapras. Uh, since he did uh, use that extra candy to evolve Ponyta earlier. Again, it's right there, so it's really not a big deal. And Eevee version just always goes for that candy anyway.
Crest is now in blue. Also did get the Dodrio, so this should be a very safe fight. Yeah, if you're unfamiliar um, with kind of the routing for this game, uh, you might uh, be wondering why don't we just pick up every convenient candy and pump them into Starmie to, you know, make everything easier. Um, but the candies are kind of planned out very uh, meticulously, not only because they take extra time to pick up, uh, but because the more candy uh, you feed to your Pokemon, the higher friendship uh, their the higher their friendship number is going to be and at a certain friendship threshold you're going to get what we call turnarounds which is you may have seen from the runners with their pikachu or eevee um, where after you land a super effective hit the pokemon kind of takes a look back at you and you know says yay be proud of me i did a good job and um, those waste about two seconds every time and uh, can be uh, very costly when you're, you know, trying to get a PB or go for a world record. So yeah. uh, we try to eliminate those as much as possible by limiting how many uh, friendship boosting items we're giving to the Starmie. Exactly. So in general, it's just kind of using four rare candies across the entire run on the Starmie. Crest is now on Archer. Let's see what he gets for an opening. Ideally, you want to see Self-Destruct turn one out of the Electrode and Mug knock off for Protect. Which looks like... No. I think that was Thunderbolts. Yeah. Still a pretty good opening since uh, he did not get crit on that Thunderbolt. So it's in a much better HP half. situation. Yeah. yeah. This is really solid. Let's hope that Electrode just goes for Self-Destruct now. Yeah, okay, perfect. So he should be on track for a four-turn fight here. Mm. Sadly, yeah. Sadly, Q1 just went for focus energy there. Uh, it would have been faster if it had just knocked out the Radicate with Bomberang right then and there. Because then mm. Crescent would have been able to skip the Radicate attack uh, every turn. Hopefully it doesn't go for headbutts. Yeah, but, yeah, okay, goes for okay. bomberang, perfect. Uh, since the Golbat was out, it would have gone for headbutt if it had uh, targeted the Golbat. But it worked out fine. So far turn, not the fastest far turn that you could have gotten, but uh, still very good, still a, just a little bit better than what Dynam got on the fight. But Minion now teaching Thunderbolts. Uh, over recover, so we'll not keep that. It's not ever really going to use light screen, but uh, you probably want to have the moves in the same slot that you always have them in, so that you don't accidentally misclick later. I can understand yeah. that. Uh, I suppose you technically could use light screen if you're one seeing Lance and Champ instead of the next special to them, but uh, yeah, potentially. That's. A very niche situation, and assuming you even uh, one controlling them, which I don't know if Vermillion's going to go for that or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Denim on Sabrina now did get the light screen turn one, which is the standard fight. So can I just, after using 3x at him, start scolding the Mr. Mayan. Uh, you do want to do that to stall out the light screen turns. And that should just work out fine here. So that screen works up, uh, wears off now. And that means that just Skull is going to be enough to take out the Zatakazam. And yeah, that's what you want to see. We also had 48 on this fight. And check the stats again. See where the Stami uh, stands for Dynam. Probably after this Jinx. There we Let's go. See. Let's see. 
123 special attack, I think I saw. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was 123. Uh, which is all right. It's not amazing, but it's not it's not gonna uh, be too terrible in the long run, I think. With the extra level up that you're gonna get from the candy right here, if he gets an AV and special attack, he might even be able to get some ranges in Koga's Gym. He's gonna heal the Starmy now. This is a pretty big menu where yeah, you're gonna heal, you're gonna deposit everything that you don't need anymore, which is everything except for Starmy and Rapidash. And you're gonna candy the Starmy. Swap some X items around for menu convenience later. And of course I didn't. What? Yeah, 126, 124. Okay. Speed should be fine. You need to hit 128 at 50. Oh, actually that could be close. Uh, because the Pidgeot on the mm. next Bravo fight has 127 speed, I believe. And you really want to outspeed that, unless uh, otherwise it can go for sand attack and really mess up the fight. Let me just double check that. I do believe that 128 is the number I'm you want sure to hit. I'm pretty sure it is 128. I think it's 128 to outspeed, and well, 140 for the right shoot, but that doesn't really matter for the peak version. Yeah, oh, oh, the Pika notes actually don't say that. It's just in the EV notes with the 128 speeds. Yes, okay. Let's hope that Denim gets that those extra points on the level up. First though, we're gonna see Koga's Gym here, uh, which... Especially the first fight here in Koga's Gym has quite the potential for time loss, let's put it that way. Yes, the real gym trainer, as many commentators have called it throughout this <laughs> The real gym leader, yeah. 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 Uh, mainly because of this muck. Uh, <laughs> what we want to see here, Taiwan, is protect. But I can also go for Toxic, Moonblast, or Minimize. Nope, protect, perfect. That's the perfect Caden fight. Uh, oh, she goes for double protect. protect and it actually works. That is very annoying, but it's it's fine. It's better than getting minimized or uh, the Moonblast special attack drop or something. Yeah, so everything in this gym has protect. Uh, so you know, every time you see it, you are basically uh, losing time and losing PP for whatever move you used, yeah. which uh, PP can be a little bit tight as we're going through these uh, couple of gyms. Trying yeah. to, especially for Psychic, uh, you want to make sure you have enough uh, to take care of some uh, troublesome Pokemon later, like Vileplume and Venusaur. Yeah, if your special attack is high enough on the Stormy, you can go for Scald on Koko's first two Pokemon, but I'm pretty sure that Diamond's ranges aren't too great here. Uh, yeah, I think you need to be high 120s or 130. Yeah, 12 and 16 score range on, on Weezing, and we well, 14 and 16 on Venomoth. If uh, he's really low on PP, he might go for the Venomoth range, I imagine. But you also want to see Protect Home 1 from this. Yes, gets Which the Protect Home 1. Goes to the second on Weezing, yes, that nice. was to be expected. Plus is meanwhile picking up uh, his 50th Pokemon in Ooh. Paragon. So I finishing up. Yeah, yeah. I think Vermillion accidentally used an X attack on Starmie instead of an X special attack. Oh and, no. But okay. just an extra turn on the blue fight, not too detrimental. Yeah. Uh, this is usually a range to kill even without the X special attack. But just didn't, didn't hit it there. I haven't been counting the protect turns for Dynam. 
No, it was not. <laughs> oh, just gets one more protect on the mech here. And there we go, that's Koga for Dynam. Now we're gonna see Vermillion on the dreaded Usher double. So far we've had a five turn and a four turn. What's gonna happen here? Will we see the three turn? Do you know what like minimum special attack looks like for a Starmie at this point? For Vermillion? Uh, I don't know what a minimum special attack Starmie looks like, no. I mean... I don't know at every point in the game. I think you're at like 133 at 53 or something like that. Or a little lower, even 131. Yeah. Because uh, uh, it was uh, pretty low, so I was wondering if like it's minimum or if maybe you forgot to synchronize. Because um, it's only 116. And that seemed pretty low. Yeah, 116 at... 116 at 46 is a thing that can happen. That is not especially low. Okay. Yeah. I think you can so get as low as like unlucky. 109 or something at level 46. Because it just wanted to be sure, because it would not be the first time that somebody is not synchronized <laughs> during this competition. So. Yes, that is not. That would not happen the first time in this tournament. That is true. <laughs> I did not actually pay attention to Vermillion's Archer fight. I have to admit, looking at Crisis screen, who's now going to face Sabrina. While wow, Dynam just uh, goes through some cutscenes before uh, they're allowed to enter the final gym. Yeah. Just a little bit of mega evolution foreshadowing in that cutscene. So let's see if Crisis also gets slide screen turn one. Yes, yep. okay. Perfect. Can also go for any other move turn one. It usually goes for light screen, but you could see reflect, you could see go for psychic turn one. Uh, and in that case, you usually have to stall another turn unless it just ends up never going for light screen. But I've never seen that happen. Yeah, I think I've only seen it happen once, not even in my own run, just like somebody streaming and um, I think that's, yeah, <laughs> out of how many hundreds of runs watching. All right, then I'm now entering Giovanni's gym. Since his special attack isn't great, Probably not going to go for Psychic on the Rhyhorn here on the first fight. The second fight could be a little more interesting depending on what he decides to do. <laughs> <laughs> True. Though I have a feeling he'll probably play it safe. Yeah, probably. At the end of the day for Dynam, uh, looking at seeding for round two, he really only needs to get into pot one, right? Uh, seating beyond that doesn't really matter. So ironically, the time he has to beat here in this run is mine, which is a 3.07.10. Uh, so as long as he's confident that he can beat that time, he should probably be playing it safe. So that means we should be cheering for a 3.07.11. <laughs> no, I'm going to be impartial here on the commentary. <laughs> I could not predict that we would get to this point when I signed up to commentate this run. I just want to mention that he is very much ahead of me uh, already, or so. so uh... Yeah, it seemed like he was on pretty good pace. 
Yeah, I think he had some trouble, but this is definitely still a very good pace. Uh, looking at my run, I'm just beating the first trainer at this point, the first trainer in the gym, so it's probably 305, 306 pace right now. If he goes for all the safety strats, that does, because that is what I did. Yeah, he didn't take a look at his shopping to see if he opted for things like the yeah, special defense. Uh, that I think he did. He did? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I saw X special defense. Of course, he skipped the X defense. So we're going to be seeing 2C Giovanni here, I assume. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Didn't summon. Either forgot to do it before the fight or... Uh, is actually going for 1C, and I missed the X defense earlier. It looks like uh, Crisis has a very high special attack on uh, this army. Okay, here comes the second controller. Yeah, probably just uh, forgot to summon it then. It's a little slower to do it in battle. If you want to see the Earthquake take out the Rapidash here yeah, just like that, it can hang on with Power of Love. Or apparently if it has very high defense <laughs> and HP can also just naturally hang on, but that is very rare. Um, but yeah, you want to see it die to save the input each turn. This does mean that Dunham will have to uh, revive after the fight, but that is just the, the drawback of using the safety strat. Yeah, it does lose time between uh, reviving and this kind of two controller lag that, you'll, that you've been seeing in between turns, but uh, it does make the fight pretty much guaranteed because it lowers the uh, damage output of Earthquake because it's becoming a spread move and uh, basically ensuring that you're not going to get knocked out, whereas uh, that is not a guarantee, um, even if you're crit. But making sure that even if you are crit, you're not going to get knocked out by it, whereas if you're doing it one controller, that's very possible. Yeah, going into fights to see is just so much safer. Just because you have two Pokemon on the field at the same time, and then the added benefit of weakening Earthquake as a spread move, right? Which is so good. Looks like Tress is getting trolled a little bit by Protect on Koga, but should be able to finish up here very soon. Just has to deal with the muck while Dynam is reviving the Rapidash and also healing the Starmie and the Rapidash. I don't think he needed to heal the Rapidash there, maybe that was just safety. Uh, if you're going to revive the Rapidash, it is smart to also heal the Starmie on the same menu. Usually if you do the regular 1c strat on Giovanni, you're gonna heal the star on the rival fight that is coming up. We did talk Since about, you're already in menu. Hmm? We did talk about that the speed might be a concern for this fight, so... Oh um, yeah, I didn't catch the level 50 speed. Let's see. Neither did I. So let's see if things... Uh, how the first turn plays out. Yeah. in my breath here. Don't want to see side attack. There's really nothing much that Venom can do in this situation. Just hope for the best. Okay, good. Oh, Gets it. No problem speed. at all. Probably just at 128 at level 50 or something. Mm -hmm.
has to set up X speed to turn two. Reason for that is that uh, he needs to outspeed the Jolteon, and that could come out turn three. Because of the way that uh, speed works in this game, X speed will only uh, take effect the turn after it's used, so you really need to use that X speed turn two. Meanwhile, the other runner is getting ready for their next gym battle. Uh, Vermilion is about to face off Sabrina once they finish these teleporters, and Crisis has the three Giovanni cutscenes to go through. And Dino coming up on the exciting part of the badge check. <laughs> well, the most exciting thing about this part is that you really don't... You want to make sure that you don't mash A for too long and accidentally yes. <laughs> talk to the Rapidash. Because that is slow. Romania now on Sabrina. Hoping for another light screen turn one here. Let's see. Alright, perfect. Yep. So three of our runners cut the light screen turn one. No one had to start a turn. Uh, so that, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to go that Dynam is coming up on uh, one of the scarier fights, even if you are, I mean, two seeing it, it shouldn't be a problem. Hopefully isn't a problem. <laughs> but this yeah. Kangaskhan is very bulky and uh, can hit pretty hard with dark type moves. So uh, it can be a little scary. Yeah, you, should, you really should go for 2C uh, in this fight, in a race. Uh, this, is, this is so scary otherwise. Because um, like like you just said, the, the Kang's Khan has both Crunch and Sucker Punch. So uh, it really can just ruin your day if you don't hit your Hydro Pump in 1C. Danim does hit it in 2C now, so that's perfect. And I assume Krasis is about to go for a Psychic plus Stomp on Samuel here mm -hmm. in Giovanni's chat. Looks like Vermillion took care of Sabrina, no problems. Just like a stump, should be guaranteed. This is slightly faster than doing what Danum uh, had to do, where you go for Scald and X special attack, because you don't have to go into the back. But uh, yeah, you have to have decently high special attack for that. Then I'm now on the second fight of Victory Road against Juggler Nelson. Mm -hmm. uh, Nelson has a Hypno, which is very annoying because uh, but you spent, it gets hit you twice basically, and it does no hypnosis, so it could put you to sleep. We really don't want to see that because we had that, okay. That is perfectly fine for Dynam. Ooh, and gets the paralysis on the thunderbolt. Yeah, that's actually you don't want to see that. Uh, <laughs> you usually prefer going for thunderbolt here if you have high enough special attack because uh, if I recall correctly, it has a lower chance of triggering that secondary effect compared to Skull. I believe so. I think it's ten percent versus thirty. Yeah. 
recall correctly. So you just want to avoid those statuses, they don't have any benefit and just add extra lag. So it's unfortunate that Denim got the paralysis there. But it's minor time loss, so... And Vermillion successfully getting into Koga's gym, so no one getting kicked out, fortunately. <laughs> Now on Caden. Well, Chris is just finishing up the Giovanni fight. Did also get the Rapidash knocked out in turn one, so no power of love. That's what we like to see. And Vermillion takes up the mark. Perfect. Yeah, just gotta protect turn one, so all good. Yeah. Then I'm now coming up on the last trainer skip of the game, Alexa skip. And executes it perfectly. This one is also pretty tricky. And especially not because it's so late on the run. Uh, but yeah, Dynam had no problems whatso whatsoever. And it's now on the Caroline fight, the third fight in Victory Road. Uh, and this Jinx, very annoying, especially if you have low special attack, because in that case, Hydro Pump can be arranged. So it can. Not only can it miss, it can also um, just not take out the Jinx. So Tandem hits the Hydro Pump, does hit, also hits the range perfect. Uh, or just has high enough to attack not to have a range. <laughs> I think it might have been a critical hit. Okay, well. That made it extra short. Yeah. <laughs> no. But yeah, the fight can definitely get annoying. I know I've. Missed three pumps there multiple times, mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. Jinx either wears you down with psychics or puts you to sleep multiple times, and it's uh, not dangerous but frustrating. Absolutely, I have a three or five PB in Eevee instead of a three or four because I um, had a Caroline fight where I missed three hydro pumps and then on the fourth one missed the range, so oh. uh, that lost me like 20 plus seconds on a three or four pace run. I know the pain. Well, then I'm just gonna press A20 times here while Cress is approaching the Rival 5 fights. Pretty sure his speed is a lot higher than what Dynam has on the Starmie, so should not be in any trouble. Getting hit with Sand Attack. And a pretty standard Koga over on Vermilion's side. Yeah, no problem yeah. at all for Crisis. And yeah, standard, standard Koga. Definitely something you like to hear, because the only way that Koga can deviate from the standard is by being more annoying. Uh, Except for that one thing where he can go for explosion turn one on piecing and save you a turn. But uh, that doesn't happen very often. In Dynam right now fighting Dawson, who is actually the first mount trainer skip, I believe that was found, um, kind of accidentally, that these Victory Road trainers do have uh, limited vision and the way you ride on certain mounts like Rapidash, uh, you can basically be on one side of their vision and then the next frame be on the other side of their vision line and uh, get past them. And so you can uh, technically avoid every trainer uh, on Victory Road um, using a ride Pokemon, but uh, that is a different category, one that we're not doing today. Uh, that's the standard, well, that's the what is called any percent, where it's, this is the any percent no mount skips. And I'm just confirming that he is on 306 pace, so uh, pretty much what I suspected. Uh, 
unless something goes terribly wrong, he should be able to to hit that too with all of the safety strats in the Elite Four. Uh, looks like Vermillion forgot to pick up the Ether, no, the Elixir on uh, Route 17 earlier. So it's just entering the Pokemon Center, taking that extra heal to restore PP on Starmie. All right, let's see what item goes for here. Just going to heal the Starmie and I assume I'm going to keep the Rapalash in, yes. Yeah. Uh, so that indicates to me that he is going for the safety strats, at least for Lance and Champ. First though, he has to fight Lorelei and because this special attack isn't super good, he might need to go for plus six or risk both a range on Lapras and a Hydro Pump on the Jinx here. Let's see what he'll go for. It's plus yeah, two? Plus six. But yeah. We will know shortly. Plus four. Does he seem to have pretty good defense on this time? Yeah, plus six. Okay. Probably the smallest choice here. Because now uh, Thunderbolt is guaranteed on everything, and also you can just scald to take out the Jinx. It does take an extra turn, but it's probably worth it. I don't know if Crisis is. Ooh, he's one seeing Naomi. <laughs> okay. That is uh, bold. bold. Yeah, bold move. Hits the Hydro Pump. It's off. It's okay. Range. Okay. Sure. Probably uh, getting a little worried for the pace of the run there. Uh, P is going for risky stuff like once in Naomi. Uh, if he wants to stay in upper bracket for round two, he needs to beat Iron's time, which is a 3.14.23. Waiting on the spinner to turn there for Crisis. Uh, you can squeeze through there without him seeing you, even if he looks down. Because uh, his vision's just a little shorter than all the way down there. All right, then I'm done with Lorelei. Now on to Bruno. And uh, yeah, be because Dynam has a second Pokemon in his party. Should likely see Stealth Rock on turn one. Not guaranteed, yes. but very likely. It is very likely, which... Uh, even if uh, Onyx goes for Earthquake here, this is perfect. Yeah, it does go for... Ooh, oh no, oh, oh no! Oh. <laughs> uh oh! 4 HP. Um, um, I'm sweating a little bit here. Yeah, that's uh, in range of a certain move. <laughs> we don't want to say it, we don't want to jinx it. Uh, that is that is not what you want to see in a race. Nope, not so much. So um, you do outspeed everything uh, in this fight. Yeah. <laughs> oh no! I'm just holding my breath, waiting for the hit Monday. Yeah. I mean, you could play it safe and just like take out the second controller on the last yeah. turn and heal. But I think he's just committed now. It is very unlikely to happen, even at 4 HP. Uh, here Depending we go. What your name is? <laughs> Depending what yeah, your name is. Okay. Ah, it takes the two C out now. Okay. Yeah. Can't stand the pressure. Some people in chat not very happy. <laughs> no. It didn't happen either. I mean, didn't even Monday go for may, it. Have just, yeah. may have just uh, targeted the Rapidash here, but, uh, well, you know, I, I I can respect that. You don't want to risk the faint yeah. on Bruno. 
Alright, Crisis. Crisis now on Alexis Gap. Also gets her perfect. This friend does not want Dynam to get P1, apparently, according to Dynam. Uh, <laughs> it is doing the best it can, yes, to sabotage the run, that is true. Some really unfortunate stuff happening to Dynam as well. Not quite as unfortunate as for Crisis, who's been having a pretty rough time. Luckily, takes out the Jinx and Hydro Pump on the first try. Yeah. Doesn't get stuck on uh, Caroline. Ah, defense drop, but it's fine. It should be fine now. <laughs> yeah, Didn't get the as... defense drop earlier on the crunch, so. Uh, yeah. Just guess the standard once he Agatha fights. However, did not get the power of love or anything where. Uh, you would save a little bit of time, potentially, by not having to go for the full restore. Yeah, and we didn't point it out at the time, but uh, Dynam did pick up that full restore uh, at the end of Victory Road, uh, which yeah. I assume all the runners will probably do, unless they're planning to two-control her Agatha. Yeah, there is a, a backup or a safety strat for Agatha where you to control her with uh, a Dojo, I believe, as the mm -hmm. second Pokemon. But I personally, I mean, it's a safety strat. Uh, I can definitely respect using it in a race setting. I personally feel like that's the least useful out of the Elite Four safety strats. Um, yeah. I personally, like, if I have Rapidash in the back, I would just pull it out if I need if something goes bad for me. Yeah. But try to one controller it. Yeah. That's also my personal approach and apparently also the one that Dynam was using here, going for the one C. Uh is now gonna heal up and use the Max Elixir and then probably gonna do the two C lands unless he really wants to make sure that he doesn't fall too far behind here because lands two C lands is very slow. Um you do go into the fight with just one controller for turn one, so we won't know until turn two if uh, he does want to bring out the second controller. I guess we'll know in turn one, because depending on which threat you go for, you set up a different X item. Vermillion uh, just standing still. I think he was trying to summon his second controller, but ah, okay. it might be because Rapidash is dead. I'm not sure if oh. that's why it's not. It needs to revive uh -oh. it. Oh, he just went into the fight. That is unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. That's so gonna. He was a little confused. Yeah. Okay. Uh, apparently, Dynam waited a turn longer to send out the second controller. Which saves a little bit of time. I actually didn't see... Yeah, uh, should have looked at Dynam's screen. I didn't see what he used there. But usually the strike goes... Um, you use XP turn 1, then you summon the second controller turn 2 and start hitting the enemy Pokemon with Stami and using X specials on Rapidash's turn. Okay, so it looks like Vermillion was able to revive on turn one and not get punished too hard. Okay. But Pidgeot did go for Air Slash, so no yeah, sand yeah. attack. Good, good. I'm pretty sure that Denim's gonna have a range here. I once again did not catch the stats. I saw them, but they were a little pixelated on my end. Uh, let's hope he hits it. He just yeah. goes for Stomp on Rapidash, so even if it doesn't yeah. hit it, that will take care of it. Okay, that's it. Gets it, perfect. And that is a little faster, just hitting it with the Starmie.
yeah. This should still be 306, I think. And Crassus is now on Lorelei here, starting the Elite Four. Uh, he probably can't afford to just go to plus four. Yeah, I think so. And Diamond yeah. playing it safe, summoning the two controller and saving before a champ. Okay. But he should he should be fine unless something really really goes wrong here. Uh, seems to be on mid three oh six pace right now, so. Should be fine for part one. All right. So ideally, you want to see the pitchy yacht take out the rapidash here, or at least take it low enough. Yep. Yeah, low enough to be in quick tech range. I don't know if that is slow enough for quick tech range. Because uh, then Jolteon will take it out and he will save a couple of inputs later. Or in this case, okay. Perfect. Yeah, Pidgeot just took it out with quick attack. That also works. That is perfect. So yeah, this basically guarantees that uh, Dana makes it to part one. Yep, just has to hit. Uh... Pretty much psychic on everything, um, except for the slow bro, yeah. and we'll be all good to go. Uh, meanwhile, Crisis is starting the Bruno fight, getting Earthquake, but in still comfortable range. Um, it's still comfortable HP, I mean, so no faint shenanigans. Yes. Marowak, my favorite Pokemon on Champ. <laughs> How's it going down here? Yeah, this is just uh, now finishing up this fight for Dynam after setting up fully to plus six. So there's really nothing that can go wrong at this point. Takes out the slow blow. And yeah, that's GG for Dynam. Looking like a 30620 here, even. So yeah, really solid run even though he had, was having some rough luck there. Uh... Yeah, between the archer fight and not having a great star, <laughs> there were some definite hiccups, but uh, definitely handled it well and still came out with a great time. Yes. Kras is now starting the Agatha fight here. Also going in 1C. I saw that correctly. All right, looks like Dana will be joining us shortly. In That's just good. a minute. Finishing with that, yeah, 306, 18 on the screen right now. Uh, very, very respectable time. 306, 19 on race time. Thank you, Sandy. Uh, I'd be interested to hear what Denim has to say about the run. Yes, definitely. We'll uh, let them get their well deserved bathroom break first and then yes. <laughs> welcome them in. Um, and I saw Crisis in the meantime just got Power of Love on Agatha, so. Uh, ah, we'd love to see that. A little bit of time saved.
Makes the fight very nice if you can skip that one turn using uh, the photo star. Yep, so right there uh, is those turnarounds we were talking about, and those typically uh, come into play on Agatha. If you do use some extra X items or rare candies, they can start on Bruno. Um, at this point in the run, they're kind of inevitable. Yeah, because you really need Starmie to be at that level and to have to you also need to use those X items, right, to get through the fight. So at some point, the turnarounds are just going to start. There's been some theorizing uh, on where to possibly skip some X items to maybe delay the turnarounds until lands, because you, basically every hit on Agatha is a super effective hit, so uh, you get so many turnarounds. It's really, really annoying. <laughs> Um, unless you just Hydro Pump everything on Agatha, then you get no turnarounds. <laughs> yeah, that is an option, of course. Uh, and if you do the 2C strat, you can also set up an extra X special and then scald everything. Hello. Hi, Dino. Hello. Hi. Uh, that, that was a run. <laughs> that was a run. But, you know, congratulations on yeah, congrats. making it to part one for round two. Uh, how are you feeling about it? Uh, thanks. Uh, feel good about making pot one for sure. Um, that uh, that earthquake crit scared the living crap out of me, <laughs> and I was just not. I I had the time to basically bring out the second controller just to yeah. secure the the no faint, even if it did. But I was just not having it this run, especially with the, uh, the really rough early game. Yeah, so yeah. Let's a little bit more about uh, the early game and uh, how you were feeling. Uh, there were some uh, eventful points. Uh, yeah. And... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, everything was basically fine up until Mount Moon. Uh, no Cool Fairy uh, meant that I decided to just go for a Zubat and just keep pushing. Uh, Justin James was whatever, and then just got accosted by many, many spawns on top of me yeah. that mm -hmm. I really just could not do anything about. Like, there was some in Moon, uh, a couple in Tunnel, like, there was some Scrabbler blocking the way. Uh, you saw the muck in Mansion that just spawned, <laughs> and I said, like, all right, we'll, we'll let the prediction roll through and see if there's a chance to... Oh, muck is literally taking up the yeah. entire pathway. It just very... It just felt like the game just kept throwing like things left and right. I mean, I was just trying to dodge and mitigate, but I think despite all of that, um, I think it ended up decently well, all things considered. I mean, definitely, 306 uh, is a very solid time in a race setting. Yeah, uh, the two good things that came out of this run, um, well, the other part that was really bad was just like low catch count going into the late game. Uh, hmm. Tower Cubone saved yeah. the run. Oh, yeah. uh, that was really, really good, especially because they didn't get Ghastly. Um, Rare Char also saved the run. Um, and I will go back through the VOD, uh, but there was a shiny Rare Char that spawned after I had uh, beat the Kangaskhan trainer in Rock Tunnel, which is funny because I wasn't even on a catch chain for it. Huh. Yeah, I believe yeah, we are having some to... technical difficulties. So, uh, uh, yeah, gotcha. we'll need your... We'll need to get your uh, clip of that. Yeah, for sure. I'll go through it after the draw is fit. <laughs> Just very, very relieved um, and looking forward to what round two has in store. Oh, definitely. I think round two uh, will have some spicy races in it. But let's actually look at what's happening on the screen right now. Uh, Crisis really racing against the clock here. Uh, if he wants to make up a bracket, like I said earlier, he needs to beat a 3, 14, 23. So apparently going for 1C. Am I saying that correctly? Yes. Yeah, Which is? A rough lane. Uh, I don't yeah. fault him for this. Yeah. yeah I I... On two of the questions, and so I picked two optionals. And he, I think it was Crisis also who uh, hit the uh, optional in Mansion, right? So oh, that yeah. was 
three options oh. back to back to back, really unfortunate. Oh yeah, that's so demoralizing. But still here on a at 312, so that's gonna be huge. Alright. Survive the setup on Pidgeot. So this is looking pretty good. Went for plus two T ball apparently, so it really has to set up to plus four here and go for the psychic uh, or for a hydro pump on Jolteon. Um, let's see what he goes for. 150, okay, probably gonna go for psychic then. Yeah, Crisis got a pretty good star. Um, it seems like its stats are a little bit better than yours, Diamond. Just, Just a, a little, little bit. bit. My star was very tanky, and that's pretty much the all I can give it. Yeah. It seemed to take the waterfalls very well on Lorelei. Took the earthquake uh, crit really well. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any other star would have probably died to that immediately, not even leaving the risk for a faint, you know? I hope I didn't scare you all with the 16 HP burn on Nine Tails and Blame. I was a that little was, worried, yes. That was, <laughs> that was totally fine. Uh, I did look at the calcs. Yeah. Uh, it should usually be fine. I was a little worried about the um, Flabbit's crit. Yeah, that, that would have been terrible. The crisis is done. Yeah, and this is going to be close. Yeah, looks like yeah, looks like he won't make it, even with the one C champ. GG though. Uh, stuck it out till the end. Didn't get. Demoralized, even with all of the things that went wrong, especially around Blaine. Yeah, around Blaine also had a rough hideout section, um, but uh, yeah, kept checking through and still a very respectable time. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure Crisis will pop in shortly, and in the meantime, Vermilion is beginning uh, their Elite Four, so it should be uh, putting up a solid time as well. Alright, final time. 3, 14, 34. Just missing the upper bracket. Let's see if he's gonna join the VC here in a minute. How is uh, how's Vermillion Star by any chance? That is the one star that I didn't keep track of. I'm afraid. Uh, uh, does anyone in chat know? Up right now. Yeah. Oh. Right now, 127. That is not good. Hi, Crisis. Man, this is a run. <laughs> I, that was I definitely thought... a run. All right. So. so, what do we want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the minus attack Pikachu, the rough hideout, the my controller decide to autofy a turbo through Blaine or the one percent star Ooh. me the star me that you all missed. Um <laughs> if you can talk about whatever you want. Yeah, start it from the top. <laughs> Alright, so right, so I wanna give people all the context that I had a run just before this tournament, just to practice, and that was also minus attack Pikachu. So today I got two minus attack Pikachus back to back. So that's uh that's uh, that's fun. That's exactly yeah. what I want to see. Uh, what? Uh, but I was able to make it up with like just all the catches in early game, which is uh, nice to have. Okay. Everything else was kind of normal except for the fact that I had to like remind myself I had my attack Pikachu, so I kind of had to play safe. Oh, right. the rocket mid game. Oh God. All right. Yeah. Uh... So, minus attack is a problem. It is a problem. It is one of the problems of all time. And yeah, just having a lot of uh, unnecessary deaths and just going for risks that probably shouldn't need to go for, but I did anyway. And then Blaine, and then when I was like at Blaine, I was like, okay. Then my controller decided to like auto fire turbo, which I get again, turbo moment. So that's my fault entirely, but 
because I because uh, where the turbo button is on the Joy-Con is where my palm rests sometimes. So it sometimes presses that, and in this controller, mm. it just changes from turbo to auto fire. So I was like, Oops. "Oh, great! Thanks for auto firing the L bumper. That's exactly what I want you to do." That's really unfortunate. But when I saw the star me, I was like at like level 30, 46 because I don't really know star use stats. So I saw star mm. me. I was like. This is really good. Like, the special attack is actually uh, very good. Yeah. Like, so I would say, and but when I saw my summer, like, best possible time being a 314, 20 something, like, literally, like, one second faster than what I need to hit, mm -hmm. I was like, it's time to, it's time to throw all safety strats out the window. It's time to go <laughs> risk or go home. Yeah. Yeah. I respect it. But sadly, I just barely missed it which is yeah. a shame so 12 seconds in the end that was really close yeah yeah you had me sweating a lot um yeah like up until tunnel like you were exceptionally close but the early i was game actually was surprised i was so very close. close to you like for because i didn't have the stream up at all actually that's a lie i did i had it on my phone but i wasn't really paying too much attention but I, w I was actually just more listening to the com to commentary. I actually just kept it undeafened so I can just listen to what's going on. Mm -hmm. And mm. apparently I was not very far behind from you, at least until the rocket incident. Yeah, my my mm. early game was not the greatest. And as well as I basically had a pass to this Pikachu, the only two uh, offensive ABs were in special attack. So it had minimum attack going into uh, Cerulean. So I couldn't really hit any ranges whatsoever to make up for lost ground. Oh, I'm not. <coughs> now I'm not. Now I'm not getting tired. It's like midnight twenty-five, and it's like, oh great, I'm not just tired at all. But this is like, yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> a shame. But I mean... given all of those, all those hiccups, and you know the optionals, you know, I still think that's a very good time to come out of it with, and. Um, yeah, I feel like you should be optimistic for the future rounds. Yeah, agreed. Sure, yeah. we cannot have My goal was round three, so, in, so instead of having the uh, Vuyas fruit of round three, which is trying to win, which is trying to get a good time in this round, I now have to actually win the, race, the, next, yeah. win the race next round. But you are in a pretty good position for that, you know, you're going to be seat one in the lower bracket, so... Uh... Impossible, it's just, I would have preferred if I could stay on top seat, obviously, but... Yeah, yeah. GG's to all of you. This was interesting learning this game. Uh, motion is definitely like the big thing I still need to learn, like catch cycles. I was able to actually like most of the time just react to like catch cycles and just try and just listening to um uh just get used to get used to this. I'm still not used to most mm -hmm. of them. I'm still like trying try to get used to them, but yeah, this is still very, very, very interesting, very interesting run. Not this one. This one's cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Except the end. The end was like very good, but well, it had to be. Otherwise, I wouldn't get. The, I wouldn't be there. Yeah, you pushed through, and now you're here. All right. Wow. Well, uh, Vermillion is now going into Lance. Has been having a pretty decent uh, Elite Four so far. Uh, nothing terrible has happened, no earthquake crits or anything. Uh, <laughs> it's going to go for the save here. I think you're also saved for Agatha, so just making extra sure that even if something goes wrong, um, the run will get to finish. Uh, so then I, I just remembered, what did you do on Lance? Because I saw that you only summoned the second controller on Aerodactyl. What was oh, the yeah. strat there? So I, I adjusted because Cedra used Hyper Beam, so it had a turn of recharge. So I used ah, that yes. time instead to just uh, push through a little bit further with 1C and then summoning Rapid Ash on Aerodactyl because they yeah. still have not calculated the range for plus two versus plus four Aerodactyl. So just went with the. Uh, when adjusted based off what I need. 
Yeah, sounds like a smart adjustment to make. I just didn't catch it uh, in time when it happened, and then I saw the Rapidash only coming out on Aerodactyl. Was a little confused about that. <laughs> yeah. Going off script, just a little bit. Allegedly, you can also push through to Gyarados, but I need to do the calcs for myself. I guess a plus. You would have been a plus two at that point. I don't know if plus two Thunderbolt is enough to take out the Gyarados. I mean, it is four yeah, times weak to, to it. Nice. Yeah, you'd have to plus two Scald at minimum, Gyarados, yeah. and then go plus four T Bolt. Uh, but that doesn't allow you to, to heal during the fight. Yeah. Uh, speaking of stars, um, I noticed this in chat, but. How did Vermilion do without Hydro Pump? <laughs> I mean, I think it's like just two turns lost, really, for Kangaskhan and Jinx at, at worst, right? Yeah, it's time uh, to see Naomi, so probably just went for Skull right, right out of the bat there. I uh, actually didn't catch what uh, happened on Caroline. Yeah, I'd assume probably just did Skull times two. Yeah. Um, There's really nothing else that you can do to get around that. Yeah, for sure. Also, seems like Vermillion is under leveled here. Uh, as some people in chat pointed out, was level 52 here for the Dragonite, which usually you had 53 on the Gyarados or from the Gyarados experience. Yeah, I'm wondering if. It seemed like he quickly menued after Sabrina, so I'm wondering if maybe he forgot the candy in that menu. Oh, I've had that happen once. Yeah. Not the worst thing. If Yastami is good, it's actually not that bad. Yeah, and you're generally 53 on champ anyway, so as long as you get past the Dragonite. I don't think the star me that woman has is remarkably strong. I think I saw 127 special attack at 51. So, would have been okay if it had hit level 53 for Dragonite. At 52, the range probably was pretty dodgy. Anyway, Vermillion now going for the extra save bug strat for time. So, not even using Rapid Ash as the second uh, Pokemon here, instead, using a bug that is 100% going to get taken out by the Pidgeot here. There we go. Oh yeah, the start is level 52 right now. Which also probably means that the minion will have to set up to plus 6 here. Ooh. So this is... Hmm. If it gets enough XP from the Vile Plume, it should. Yeah, I think it should be fine then. I'm going to plus four. Uh, yeah, this should be enough. Yeah, there we go, level 53. Uh, just in time. 134, okay. Because if he had been... Uh, if the star had been level 52 for Raichu and or Marowak, that could have been pretty bad. Especially with the, uh, the damage calc. 134 is, is very low. Special attack though, for 53. Is it a Marowak range low? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, especially not at plus 6, uh, but it was plus 4, so I guess we'll see. I think it might be a range because, well. That's what's called, okay. Just, I think, okay, yeah, and we're gonna not. Yeah, beginner notes, I think. Just always go for Skull here. So, yeah. uh... Yeah. I was gonna mention that T-Pad had a run that died here because he missed the Psychic Range on Marowak. Yeah. Shout out to T-Pad. That can happen. Joined the elusive club of just me, I think. Who that has also happened to. <laughs> uh, 
GG for Million. Yeah, I'm sorry, T Pat. Yeah. I know this is my fault. <laughs> Shout out to T Pat, one of the most persistent runners that I know. I curse you. I'm so sorry. Anyway, GG to Vermillion. It's probably gonna finish here with a 328, which means uh, gonna be in pot two lower bracket with that time. Hello? Oh, hello. Wait, what was final, yeah. final time? Sorry. Huh? What was final time? Uh, we can't see it yet. Okay, okay. Uh, um, are you finished? Were you able to hit done? Yes. In uh, race time. Screen, yeah. In race time. Make sure that you either hit done or type out dot done and then answer. Oh, the on, on the GG thing? Yeah. yeah. Uh, race time GG. Alright. There you go. On screen, on Perfect. screen timer says 3.28.07 here for the final time. Okay, okay. The reason I asked that is because that was probably the worst one I've ever done in that game of life. <laughs> but like, that's why I was like, I was playing it and I was like, wait, this is, I'm like doing everything wrong. And like, I'm getting really bad and I'm like running into all these, these like trainers I should be running into and stuff like that. Stuff like that. But um. Yeah, I was really motivated after this run, though, honestly. Like, I was thinking about it, I was like, damn, like, I could have been playing so much better. And this is my this is my lowest, so I wonder what my highest is, you know? So. Yeah, that's what the next round is for. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Like, I, I, I was like, kind of sad when I got that encounter um, after I got, you know, like, uh, Rapidash. Like, that encounter took me, like, f like three minutes to get through. Yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. but, yeah. like... I was like, you know, it happens, and like we learn from our mistakes and stuff like that. And I know I can do better, um, but it was really fun to learn this. Like I was like thinking about, it. I was, I was like, I'm, I'm having a blast right now. Like this is so fun. Mm -hmm. I love racing. I'm glad to hear that, and that is really the beauty of this of this uh, format because you do get to have another race and uh, potentially improve until then. You know. Oh yeah, definitely. Because like I was like, I was thinking to myself like I can do so much better. Like I'm, I got. Like that whole run, my 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 star me was also like pretty not that good either. So I was like, yeah. well, this could be like I could be doing so much better, and I can get luckier and this other stuff like that. I used to be playing a lot better, learn a lot more. But yeah, it was really fun to learn this game and everything. Sorry, I came in here and <laughs> said that really loud and really fast, but oh, no, I was just thinking, I was just thinking that the whole time. I was like, damn, I could be like, I just want to, I just want to get a run where like I don't. Like, I want to run, that's the opposite of this run, in the next round. <laughs> oh, you, you definitely get a chance to start over uh, on the next run. Yeah, for uh, sure. It's been, it's been a really fun, like, few days learning this game. I've only been playing for, like, a few days, and it was, like, uh, every single run has been, like, really fun to learn. And, like, learning from your mistakes and everything just feels so good in this game. Because, like, you know what to yeah. do in the future. You learn, like, better route catch routes, and, like, you know how to do, like, better cycles and stuff like that. GG's to uh, Crisis and Dynam, though. You guys are so good. <laughs> Thanks. GG's to you as well. And GG's. Yeah, for picking up this run, just like very recently, like awesome, like major props to you. Oh, thank you. It was, it's, it's been a blast and like uh, the resources are there. Well, that's what I like about it a lot. All right. Well, uh, do we have any final words here? Uh, if I may, uh, may Sorry. all minus attack Pikachu's go to the distortion wall where, Arvin, where Arvin's Greedon is. Same. <laughs> yeah, I would just recommend re uh, using the backup saves for minus Pika. It's very, very annoying, especially in hideout. Uh, now crowdfunding a new uh, switch for, for Crisis to destroy the switch entropy that leads to minus attack. <laughs> No, I swear, I'm going to go back to every single one of my runs, and I'm pretty certain that I am more than 50-50 on minus attacks. That is so, so uh, unfortunate. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to say one last thing. Before this race, <laughs> and I have it again. What's the probability of happening that twice in a row? That's uh, 125 times 125. Uh, yeah, Vermillion, <laughs> what did you want to say? Oh, so um, when this run started, 
I was uh, like, okay, I didn't get the nature I wanted, so I was like, okay, well, I'm going to reset here. And then when mm -hmm. I fought Pikachu and I got paralyzed and I literally took like a billion years, I was like, damn, this is this is going to be the, the, the present how this, the run starts, isn't it? Mm, yeah. <laughs> or it started early with the, with the bad RNG for you, that's true. Yeah, but it was funny because like, I was like, I was laughing about it. Like, I wasn't really mad this whole entire run or anything because, you know, that's how, that's how the run is. You know, sometimes you just get lucky and sometimes you get lucky. That is true. Uh, Gavin, do you have anything to say? Um, just a great run from everybody. It was very entertaining. Uh, great doing this with you, Triv. And yeah, I don't know if you want to, uh, before your, or after your closing words, give a little preview of what's coming up next on the channel. Yeah, so uh, we're not done with uh, content on this channel for today because uh, right after this uh, is going to be the draw for round two. So you definitely want to make sure to stick around for that. We will have to shut down the stream just for a minute here uh, to basically prepare for that draw. But uh, yeah, we're going to be right back. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And GG's to the runners again. Uh, also, thank you for Gav to Gavin for commentating with me. It was a blast. Uh, yeah, like Furious Rotten Chat, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.